Kill them. Okay. We'll pull the stuff together here. We'll get started. <clears throat> Okay, changes in uh, agenda to the agenda or public comment. So, Cindy Riddle. Well, from Liggins Road, I have a complicated letter that my neighbors helped me write, and it is complicated, and it doesn't make a lot of sense. <laughs> yep. There's just too much data information. So, this is your copy. It was wrong. I tried to rewrite it in plain language. <laughs> I deleted a lot of information in my plain language. So I, I don't want to hold you up and we don't have to discuss it. But this is what my neighbors on Diggins wrote. And I would like to say to everyone here, I'll try and do good. Um, select board members. My neighbors helped me make a list of questions and requests that even to me are hard to understand and confusing. I'm providing a detailed letter that will try to summarize concerns and eventually come to a conclusion. We are not aiming to target Tyler Maynard, but his recent proposed, proposed cannabis grow facility on class four Diggins Road leads us to ask questions and research the facts. Mr. Maynard did tell me about his cannabis business plans last April in person. We talked about it in detail. He gave me a bumper sticker for my car, everything. Um, he said it wasn't a secret. We didn't have to keep his secret anymore. He said that he had worked out all of his permits with the town administrator in August of 2021. I did contact Ron right after that because we had been keeping the secret of cannabis on Diggins Road for a year. And it was very uncomfortable. In this letter, I need to show that there is a pattern of non-compliance by Mr. Maynard, but also a lack of transparency in how the town has handled numerous situations. There's something there's something missing in all of these documents. And I can't find the answers but there's something wrong and I feel sorry for other communities. I know there's another neighborhood in Hyde Park that feels the pressure we feel and they do not want me to tell their location. Um, so as brief as I can, Tyler Maynard's opening statement at the DRB hearing that just happened on the 29th for his proposed business was the Green River Cannabis Company is an operation, is an is an operational state-of-the-art business at 385 Diggins Road. His product is available in 10 cannabis retail outlets in Vermont with more to come. He and his lawyer stated that they have done everything to make sure all required permits were completed to the state's regulations. One of the state Vermont regulations for cannabis control board rule number one, all applicants must attest they will comply with required inspections or permits from other state and local agencies, for example, certificates of occupancy. So it seems a moot point to be presenting a pros proposed business when it already exists, it's operational, it's fully functioning, it's, it's up and running. Um, it has a website, it's in the local Morrisville hemp store or cannabis store, uh, the product, sorry. The state of Vermont cannabis rule number four, if you go to that section, violations, category one are of the severity that would make a person ineligible to receive, renew, or maintain a license. Operating, and then the number one is operating without all required permits, board approvals, certification, registration, and or licenses could mean that his, if he's operating without a license, it is a severe penalty. So I'm asking you to look into the following documents. If you can provide them to me, or if you just want to give them to the DRV, it'd be nice if we could understand more of the situation. And this goes, unfortunately, this is a, a packet for you to have. This is where I got all my information from the town vault or from neighbors who were at previous meetings. 
so this all came from the town vault. You can get, and I barely touched the file on Mr. Maynard. He has two files and I barely touched the top of one. Um, okay, so going back to the be beginning, just to see that there seems to be non-compliant in the history. So the history would dictate what the future is for us. I don't see a drastic change. So has a permit been issued for the second floor wood shop building? In these plans, it is an apartment, but when it was originally built, there was no apartment mentioned. It was an open storage area with no mention of apartment. There is an apartment now, it's listed on here. Is there a septic system for that apartment and was it approved? And these are just piddly island items just to show a trend. The woodworking business was permitted for 476 square feet, but it's actually 1900 square feet. Did the DRB ever go back and reapprove that larger number? Or did they, is it still standing that they think it's 476 square feet? The woodworking shop, as Tyler has agreed to, to not run two businesses on one residential property, is going to decommission the woodworking shop. How will the town ensure that that will happen? We still see cars going to the woodworking shop on a daily basis. They could be friends. He says there's his children's toys are in there and it's decommissioned. Did Mr. Maynard get approval from the town to move his permitted house location to the Cusaro's property? His house was originally permitted and you have all the documents. It was permitted kind of in the middle of his property with a septic system above. It actually is on the Cusaro's property. Um, please, please provide the documents for the property line boundary adjustment that was done in 2015 before the house was built, giving 1.3 acres of the Cusaro's land to Mr. Maynard. And there are court documents on this. Provide the correspondence from that time to and from the Cusaro's that indicates they had knowledge and consent they were giving away land for free and a home was going to be built on that land. From what I remember hearing, it was they knew about a septic system was close to the to the property line. They did not know a house was going to be built on their land, and we were they were giving away acreage. From what I was told, but there's a court case. You have the documents. I would just like to know more of the facts to show the trend of this situation. Please provide information from the August. 2021 DRB meeting related to the business Mr. Maynard was going to propose for a 100% business at 501 Diggins Road. He withdrew his application hours before the meeting and the business plan was not given in the announcement. There was no mention of what business he was going to propose and all the neighbors were going to come because we had been watching all of the land development that's in those pictures. We saw the greenhouse go up. We saw the numerous trucks from Percy's construction, you know, over 50 trucks just to get the driveway in for that greenhouse. So we wanted to know what was going on. And I talked to Ron that day um, and he let me know that it had been canceled. Please provide the original documents and drawings for the new residential only garage that was permitted in April of 2021. It was permitted with a maximum size of 1700 square feet this building, is now, this building now has a second floor with over 600 square feet, giving it a total of 2,208 square usable feet inside. Was there an adjustment to the original permit, allowing it to be that large? Or when, or when you put out a permit for a garage and it says maximum 1,700 square feet, does that mean you can add one, two, or three stories to it and the 17 is just the base? We would just like clarification on that. That does 1,700 square feet mean the footprint and you can do whatever you want above or is that the total usage? So we would like clarification on that. Um, the building also has a bathroom uh, with a shower. Does it have a septic system? This is the new cannabis growth facility. Is there a permit for the interior driveway to this new cannabis facility or is one needed? We don't know the answer to that. 
please provide information in regards to an April 22nd, 2022 email uh, that I wrote to Ron. I sent him the Green River Cannabis Company LLC documents. I also sent him aerial Google Earth of the new commercial greenhouse, the new building, all of the land development, what it looked like before and after. Ron was going to contact Tyler. This was after I talked to Tyler. Tyler said it was fine. We could talk about it. I would like to know what the communication was at that time. If Tyler denied it, if Ron knew, I would like to know what emails transpired between them. I checked up on it again. Ron gave him a deadline, I think, of April 26th to respond back. On April 28th, I asked again, have you heard anything? And I think you were just leaving messages. So I am curious of what transpired during that time. Provide any follow-up information after a select board meeting in May of 2022 about a new cannabis business on the class board Diggins Road, along with the Green River Woods subdivision moving forward with the development of lot number one in the subdivision. Subdivision has broke the, they got their permits. They got it in 45 days. They have started preparing the ground and they will be building in the subdivision um, next spring. So that did get approved. I wonder if the select board had any say in the class four road, because when I came to you guys, you said that permit's gonna take a while. They're not gonna be able to build because they have to come through the select board and get approval for the class four road. DRB. And the DRB did approve it. They said the road's fine. Go through the right. Because they told me to come to you, which I did, because they said they had nothing to do with class four road. So anyway, so I guess, and I did come to you guys and you said it was up to you guys. That it would, it would come to you and you would make a decision. If the DRB felt that the road. Oh, so okay. The DRB, yes. All right. Which is why I dealt with in the past. All right. So that's, that's exactly that's your my experience. experience. That was yours. That's why I'm looking at it. It was my experience that that's how it, yes. So, okay. So, anyways, the class four road now has subdivision moving forward and we have a cannabis built cannabis business on a class four road. Okay. So, I can skip that. Um, uh, please provide select board approval for the required permits or agricultural permits for the tier two size greenhouse at 501 Diggins Road. And I asked Ron if I was a commercial greenhouse, what would I need? I would somehow have to have the select board's approval from what I understand. If it's a cannabis grow, it's not agricultural, so it needs a different type of permit, which I think the select board also has to approve that. Ron can figure, tell me that more in detail. Somebody, but there's no permit right now for the commercial greenhouse. And Ron at one point said that it will be taken down. Now Tyler says that he's not gonna grow cannabis in it. He is going to grow vegetables and herbs. Um, right information learned from my email in August about the smell coming from the greenhouse at the, and that the resident stated they had a license to grow cannabis that was in the greenhouse. I took a photo when I was driving out and I did provide that. I'm sorry that it's grainy and doesn't give you all the detail, but those are so the second one there. This this one? That, okay. That is from his driveway. And those are the plants that is his partner. When I said, what about the cannabis in the greenhouse? She said they had a license. At the meeting the other day, Mr. Maynard and his lawyer stated that he was growing hemp in the greenhouse for the past two seasons, and it is not Canada. So since you need a license for hemp, can you please provide us with the license, the dates that it was active, number of employees, all of this information, was was any of this information given to the town prior to the recent DR meeting? Had they been told that there was hemp there? Please provide the data. Please provide the date that a cannabis license was issued. And Tyler sent that to Ron like to know the date of the application. When I checked with the Cannabis Control Board, he did have a partial application in, in April. In October, the town had no confirmed information that there was cannabis on Diggins Road, but the license for Green River Cannabis Company of Hyde Park was on the public register. Mr. Maynard stated that he will only use the commercial greenhouse for vegetables. How can the town ensure this? If he starts growing hemp or cannabis again, He's not licensed to do it in that capacity. It's a tier two and he's classified as a tier one. As I come to a conclusion, it appears the situation is not being handled with transparency. 
in the past when I requested information about the development in the Green River Woods subdivision. Ron was great. He immediately included me, sent me all the, all the emails from the architect. I was kept in the loop through the entire process. And that's not the case with this. So why is the town administrator and the town being so silent with their communication with Mr. Maynard? I haven't seen one email. I haven't seen one communication. Has Mr. Maynard made false statements to the town about his activity in the past year because Ron has reached out to him on numerous occasions? The town's lack of information and interest in the situation has caused much more strain between the neighbors than needed. I wanted a peaceful transition with Tyler. I did not want to be his enemy. I did not want to accuse him of anything. And that's why I asked him in person, can we talk about this? And he said, yes. So I did. I reached out to Ron. I reached out to the select board. I reached out to the sheriff. I reached out to the cannabis control board. And I reached out to one of the DEA detectives. And we still, no one in this town knew that it existed. And how did that happen? That's what I'd like to get to know. I reached out politely to everyone. Who else could I have called? I reached out to everyone. I called the Cannabis Control Board, said, please be watching this. Please help this man do the right thing. He has a history of not. I reached out to everyone. You could have brought us together as neighbors for a productive discussion instead of tearing us apart with unanswered questions and speculation. It's been frustrating for neighbors to be told the business does not exist. When we could see it, we could smell it, and we could see the traffic. Thank you for your time. I know you have a lot to do. That's what I have to say. Thank you so much. Can we provide those items that she mentioned, or do you want the copy of it so that we can make sure she gets the items? Okay, yeah. That's a lot. Thank you. That's a process is ongoing. So a lot of the stuff that she's asking about the DRB is currently in a public hearing process. Gotcha. And Ron. That will continue on Thursday night, at six o'clock. Oh, and I probably won't bother it, but yeah, at, the no meeting, at the meeting, at the end of the meeting, you made a comment that you and Tyler had talked about other ways we could make money, and this was his business, and I asked you, how long have you known about this? How long? When was the very first time you talked to Tyler and he admitted that he had an intent to grow cannabis? Was that in October when Brian reached out to you? Or did he ever once mention cannabis or hemp to you before that? I don't take notes on that kind of stuff. If somebody's thinking about what they can do with their property, we have multiple conversations about. You know, he was you we were under the impression he was under investigation by the sheriff. There was an investigation. Did you document any conversations with him about cannabis? That's what I want to know. Did you document anything? The process for zoning back up a little bit. Once the town's aware of a potential violation, we do. Investigation, which typically means calling the landowner. What are you doing? We've had a complaint. We think something might be going on. And it goes through a, a sort of an informal process of fact finding and what the options are. There's no heavy hand in zoning. Okay. So, so did, did Tyler it, ever? It, it, I'm not going to answer any okay. dates. So has he ever? The process before October. Okay. The process is just like that. It evolves over time. If there's any time that Tyler has been planning on doing something, he could do exempt things up there. He could grow hemp up there. He right, could build on someone else's property. He could build on someone else's property. And we have and he there's, 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 there is a, there is a significant consent that Tyler often will jump and then ask later. Well, why don't we do something about it? You approved the it. The, well, you, well, you because approved. that's we have to operate within the rules of the town and the state. You yeah. approved Some the boundary state. adjustment without the Kutzro signature. You gave away one. That's not three. true. Do you have the document? I, all I have is the legal document from the lawyer. The lawyer yeah. When it states that. That went to trial. I, mean, I know. It was resolved because Kutzro had signed the consent. So if you want to, if you want to have evidence of that, I that's, do. that's fine. It was all contained in the court order. 
So they had to. They knew the house was going to be there. <laughs> You're talking about so, something that was went to court, was resolved, and is perfectly fine today. So the, I know, the process of the Kudros just sold us of their land because of what I think the issue that you're raising is that when the DRB comes up with an answer, which will be a written decision of the DRB on this current facility, no, I don't he's going to gonna have they're going to have to include all of the things that you raised in this letter. So he's going to basically, under a new permit, have conditions and constraints on what he can do up there. Based on his testimony and the evidence that the DRB has, yeah. you will be able to. It's not it, oh, wow. it, since I you, hope it's fun. Excuse me. I hope no. I said I'm no. Wrong. I'm, I'm going to stop talking if I get interrupted. Can you have that? The process of that DRB decision is if, since you participated in that hearing, you can appeal that to environmental court if you're not happy. That's the process. The complaint comes in, the landowner does what they're supposed to do, get to the DRB, the DRB hears from the neighbors, decision comes out, and you have the option to appeal if you don't like it. It's I as simple as that, regardless of the time frame. It's as simple as that. These guys got things to do. We're not going to get it more. Yeah. You want to get it somewhere because we are having a hearing, and you are going to have a decision that you're either going to like or not like. Well, I don't know why you keep saying that you're not getting anywhere. You, I think the process is working the way it's supposed to. Well, no, the, it's okay. It's okay. Yeah. It's mine, mine is just the lack of transparency. You can have as much transparency as you'd like. You have some specific requests in here. When did Tyler hear the county of the going to be responded to in here. And if I have that information, I'll share it. And if I don't have it, I'm not going to make it up. Thank you for your time. Thank you. He doesn't get away with everything. He went to court, he resolved things, he paid a fine to the town for other things he's done. I don't know what you're talking about. You're worthless. No. Any other comments? Thank you. Sort of out of select board's at this point. If there's a court appeal, then back to you. Right now, it's all a DRB. The straight sure she had the same presentation. I don't think we've talked about cannabis by her. I know. I don't think we've talked about cannabis. The Planning right Commission two meetings ago had their first discussion of cannabis. Well, it just became so, so there's a there's an overlapping thing with the state of Vermont intentionally through the legislature open the floodgates on these things purposely wanting to establish vermont cannabis grow operations on a very quick time frame. none of the towns around here have been able to catch up with that and it puts the neighbors against the growers and that's where we are we have this classic case of repeating all over the state so just barely last week got adopted interim zoning to deal with cannabis and they have a full planning staff and could have anticipated this and they still our yeah. planning commission i think the same presentation was made two nights ago or whatever, to the planning commission by, by cindy mm -hmm. and they referred it to the zoning you know it's not mm -hmm. as planning commission thing on the flip side communities can <laughs> initiate a local cannabis control commission which will get the notice that I think Cindy is really upset about. Sure. The state of Mount Land issued this stuff without any public input, including that's, a local permit that which, she's not getting. That's really problematic. That. Yeah, and that's understandable, right? I mean, so the commission, a local control, would flip that around. They couldn't, the state couldn't issue a permit without local approval. Yeah. So the planning commission is meeting on that kind of uh, what's the next February? They're going to talk about it again about whether they think that recommendation to do. To implement that citizen committee to review those things. Sure. Mm -hmm. Obviously, we have a commitment to the town. So, in our response, obviously, they just left it said, I want to make sure that we are doing our diligence to make sure that when we do respond, mm -hmm. we take our function to that and, and in a professional manner respond to. If we have very specific requests, yeah. we can tick off here and, and get heard the information. It's not going to change the outcome. Yeah. The DRB here. Yeah, I agree. Right. But understand the second, and she should put a lot of energy, I, I think, into that commission idea because that's real. That solves half of the problem. The other half is Tyler jumping in and asking for permission. And there's like, there's, a, there's a misconception where people think select board makes all the decisions. I know. Yeah. yeah. And, and we we just got a seven page document that filled us in on it and asking why we. I don't know. It's been a whole year. I've been here my first year, and this is the first time I'm seeing it. So. 
And normally sort of what it was on a field of environmental and, and she brought up with the road, right? That was that's also not something we can deny somebody who owns a piece of property. We can't you can't wrote it into your own policy, right? Any existing lot owner can do right. whatever lot has zoning, right? Regardless of the classification or condition of the road. Right. When you had, in 2019, the select one actually said that to make it clear that road issues won't be a hindrance on commerce on existing lots. So there's a lot of avenues you can go down to try to find something that Tyler's not quite doing. The thing he does is jump and ask later. So he did that with the all the things that she was saying because that, we, all that stuff that she was we, saying. We had stopped to down to the fire and plowing that years ago, we'd have been in a lot better shape. Nothing more to be said there. <clears throat> but we're plowing it and we're doing the zoning. She'll get her answers. Court case or not will happen after the DRB issues decision. Like so the DRB is deciding Thursday. Yeah, cannabis and the uh, prohibition on the apartment and the prohibition all on the working, all the things. All the, the house, got it. All that stuff he was writing down is being rolled into one decision of the DRB. Gotcha. And he's testified to all that stuff, not continuing. And two weeks ago, and right here at that table. So it's sort of like she's catching up with things that he's trying to fix through the permit. But she's also operating from a point of view that he should have been up front and done this first and then go to the state. And that's, they have the option of not doing that. I did call the, the enforcement division of the Cannabis Control Board, and we talked about what it meant when somebody, she cited it down here, this 4.5. 4 she said, that, you know, for this current status of the Cannabis Control Board, they're pretty much like people fly. <laughs> Because it happened so fast. Yeah, they're, they're still getting used to staffing, the rules. I mean, everybody's in mode here. It's really hard to have clear guidance. And, and does, does the town have any enforcement on to say that? I mean, do we have any enforcement saying you have a business and what you own on have four employees on it? It's an inside outside the building. So inside the building, the state of Vermont. Yep. Outside the building is the town for site plan. Okay. Driveway, grade, right. Right, traffic, yep. noise, noise and order at the property line. Which he testified would be zero to the DRB. And he'll just continue the But again, okay, so he testifies zero. Well, we as the town, we have no ordinance. If five people are showing up there, you have no ordinance to say that they're his employees. You can't. Where do we, we don't stand on saying. No, you'd have you'd have to do an investigation and say that, you know, on a certain such a day, there was five cars observed. Uh, who were they? Will you tell us? Or if they don't tell us, you go to the court and get a court order to have people tell them to the test who they were there. You have to get their location. They, they can easily say how to visit. Right. You're not going to you're not going to witness who the town. I guess that it's sad to be said. I know, but it truly is that that becomes a private court case essentially. Or I don't know. You know what I mean? No, I don't even know. Obviously, I want to. I don't know sure about that. the civil stuff, but I, know I want to do all our due diligence for sure. I do yeah. Think. Right. Well, the traffic issues, the DRBs, we yeah. looked at that, and she's, I think she raised in a hearing the question about friends and family. The court, the courts have ruled on friends and family. There's no limit. And I know that. That's what I'm saying. I mean, you could have people over shooting guns in your yard. It's not a gun range until you charge a fee. Correct. Right. Um, you know, that kind of stuff. Yeah. You can have friends and family come over to ride dirt bikes in your backyard. There's no problem with that because that's residential use. Until it becomes more of a community um, track, you know, where people just come and go, even without a fee, it can become so big that it's a noxious thing on a neighborhood. At what point? What, what, what point uh, one, Act 250. I think we should continue on with something else. Uh, Act 250 in the fire uh, department, no orders. It's a, uh, a home business, so they don't take jurisdiction. I'm educated myself. No, but that it's a little bit as a home right. business, so Act 250 and fire marshal don't take jurisdiction. On a home one? On a home can on a home at, at the tier one level. At tier oh, at the tier one. Once yeah, you start getting commercial development tier yeah. two. Maine is reconsidering that because their fire marshal is responding to numerous facility grow plants that have fires because nobody's putting in the right electric and lighting and they're catching the buildings on fire. So the, the state fire marshal in Maine just has a little news article and said, We are concerned about this because you're you, you the state, are not having them check with us first. That's exactly what okay, Brian. Anyway, that's what I think Roland's right. We gotta move on. Yeah. Okay. So uh 
Nimm den Emblem Stelle. Stop, hier ist rum. Hier ist Gott. We are asking for a 3% raise this year. Paid products portion would go from 125,600 to 129,407. We're pleased that we were able to do that in spite of inflation being 8 to 9%. Basically, the increase is coming from an increase in wages. Um, you can't pay the same wages as McDonald's pays for the people that we need. Um, healthcare costs, fuel costs, and we are adding a second crew. Right now, we run two crews during the day, 12 hour shifts, then one crew at night. We've been keeping track of calls lost through mutual aid at night um, to see when we could afford to add crews without affecting the towns unreasonably. So we're adding a second crew Thursday, Friday, and Saturday nights, which is like 80% of the calls we we're losing at night were those nights. Um, of course, this budget starts January 1st. We'll be starting the, um, those nights shortly. So we can pick up extra calls. So that's what we're adding, some interesting and in what we're asking for. Some interesting statistics is we have had, as of November, we have had one, um, where is it? 1,500, no, excuse me, 1,000, yeah, 1,596 calls um, versus 1,436 all of last year. We're on track for 1,741 calls, so quite a bit increase in calls. Of the 1596 calls we've had through November 30th, we are only able to bill on 1177 of those, 73.7%, because a lot of times we're doing, um, people fall out of bed, somebody's gonna show up and assist them, lift assist, so we do those. People would go somewhere, people refuse transportation, we can't bill for any of that. So, and of our um, three locations, we have the highest percentage of billable calls of the of the Morgan and Newport stations and ourselves. We often ask why we do transfers. Um, in our billings this year through November 30th, we have a total of $872,440 in billings. Our 9-11 calls were 295,000 or 33.8%. Transfers were 577,000 or 66.2%. So that's what keeps the money that we need from the towns to a minimum why we do transfers. Yeah, so get a little bit. Um, by transfer, you mean like probably to hospital, probably to hospital, to, nursing home to hospital. Got it. Um, now, is it also true on that, uh, on the billables, the non-billables? That one of the ways to get at that issue is to actually have like a local ordinance or something local that would charge people, but it's not recommended because then you discourage them calling. We're right. Not, is that about the argument there? We're not allowed, period. Okay. Oh, okay. We transfer some, uh, transport someone. For the insurance company purposes or by just general state. Law. We can't bill like for anything. Right. Okay. Like fire departments can't bill. So those are truly not billable. No no, no, nothing we can do at this past hour. Until they get into your ambulance. Yeah, well, we can treat them in the ambulance, but if they walk out and don't go to the hospital, we can't bill for anything. Interesting. So even if you treat treated them in the ambulance, it, yes. Oh. So uh -huh. we have to literally handcuff them and take them. Yeah. <laughs> um, my, my wife was in an accident a couple of weeks ago, and they showed up, and I tried to convince her to go to the hospital so we could get billed, but. <laughs> She wouldn't listen to you, <laughs> which is not a first, <laughs> right? It probably won't be the last. <laughs> it wasn't scratch on her when I told her they should be checking it out, all right? Um, so that's okay. And I told you last year, uh, with additional COVID funds, we paid off the mortgage. This year, we were able to pay off an ambulance, replace the roof on the building, we put a metal roof on, and we had some interior renovations paid for by COVID funds. Uh, so it didn't cost the taxpayers money, but not the local property taxpayers money. 
And as far as health, we're in good shape right now. We've found some local people as well as what I call COVID immigrants that have moved to Vermont and looking for jobs. So we're in good shape right now. It could change next week. You never know. All right. So any questions? So no 3% next year because you're going to fill up the gap what we made this year under ARPA. Well, let's look at <laughs> okay. let's look at why. <laughs> <It's not laughs> the future. Yeah. Um, we'll see what happens with healthcare. Yeah. Who knows? We're trying our best to keep it to them. You can always add yeah. ambulance or great. Mm -hmm. yeah, off to my next one. Perfect. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, town fire budget and new truck purchase session with Brad. Welcome, Brad. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Brad, if you would have been kind of up here. Sure. Way, then. So I'll just cover the budget part in Ron, not Wayne, and Chris are my truck committee. And they have all the information on the truck, so I'll let them create. So, with us asking, coming to you guys asking for a new truck this year, um, we really set down and look through the budget and cut a lot of things and only increased a few things like the uh, gas and oil and that stuff. Um, so I think it ended up being only like a little over a thousand dollars increase what we were going to be asking for the total of with our, with our water expense. Um, the total budget is going to be 109250 what we're asking for. So 1.37 on, did you figure that out? Yeah, there was a little bit of thing. Tens of a percent off there. I know. I was, did you see me? I was just going to try to figure it out. <laughs> No, we can't do that. No, when we're, when we're looking at budget versus actual, I'm seeing 21 and 22. You've been below every year. That's true. That's According to the record, yes. Okay. Um, this is new. Ron had me do yeah. this this year. Um, but I think, Ron, the actual, like, um, for example, the salaries, um, we had budgeted 22, and it showed we spent 12. Did the... June, right, right back after that report. Yeah. I was going to say, yeah. I think a lot of these at the end when yeah, right. July 1st came. Yeah. So, with the, with the different finance people, yeah. the historical practice was oh, January, yeah. July. And if somebody doesn't remember to pull the July back because it's like 60 days ahead, yeah. then it looks like it's light spending, but it really just been right. in the privacy. And I think, this year. I think yeah. when I was talking to Jennifer, we're going to try to get on. Into the same fiscal year. Yeah, I think she's talking to you. Yes, so yes. Yeah. So we're trying to get we everything so after the end of the fiscal year. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. 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 Okay. So, that makes sense. So, so that's why a lot of the actual numbers are off from what the actual budget is because the time a lot of it, a lot of it got paid after that year and it never yeah. got added. Yeah. Because that was the first thing when I started doing this for Ron. I called Jen up and I said, "Hey, what's going on here?" You know, I said, "I know the budget." We're a lot closer to twenty than that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, so okay. So, um, so that's what you know because there is a huge price increase on the fire trucks. Unfortunately, this year, I know we started specking them out last year, and we were looking at four twenty-five last year. And you guys are going to be completely shocked of what the numbers are this year. So they're up in the 600 range this year. Horse and buggy tag. Right. Yeah. Um, and then the only other they thing. They still got the card up there. All yeah, that's needs the horse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's still sitting upstairs. Um, <laughs> we got to find water somewhere. Yeah. Steve would love the horses in the cars. Yeah. Water bears still got the bladder one. We got a whole ladder pair upstairs that's all tore apart. They got the horse cart with the ladder, but you guys got to pump it. Oh, yeah. yeah. Crazy. We got a whole ladder pair upstairs. We're just going on this way. 
So the only other thing that I would like to bring up is um our current jolly unit. Um it's 20, what is that? And that's 25 years old now. Um is out of service. Um we can't get it serviced and we can't get parts for it. Um last year I came to you. Yes, I remember talking in, about that. Um buying a battery powered uh, combi tool to start working on things. Well, now we have no jaws besides that battery operated unit. Um, I've talked to the manufacturer that I, we purchased that one from. So a brand new cutter that would give us spreaders in cutters. Um, you're looking at almost 11.5 for a brand new one. He'll sell us a demo like he did um, the combi tool for 9,500. Um, so I was wondering if we could take that 9,500 out of the small equipment fund. I know we have it. I talked to Jen. Um, that comes out of reserve fund oh, that we sent referencing? Yeah. yeah, it's that small equipment reserve fund that we have. Okay. Um, and purchase that scene. We're getting a heck of a deal on it. And that way we don't have to call mutual aid if we knock on wood. We haven't had to use jaws in a long time here in High Park. Um, hopefully it will stay that way, but if we ever did need it, we don't have to wait for a mutual aid department coming in. Right. How old is the demo? It's just a, it's a couple of years old, if that. Uh, and that's um, good for a long time. Yeah, so, I I so what he said, so um, we get two batteries with the charger, just like the brand new one. And he said the warranty is the same as, new, as a new one. Uh, yeah, so paying 9,500. And he says there's hardly any scratches on it. Um, most of the time, the um, they never had to use demos. A lot of times they'll bring them to fire prevention shows and show them and all that. Um, he says once in a great while, a department will call them and have them come and demo them. But most of the time, the department's already had his tools, so they just buy them new ones and never has to use his demo. New ones, 11, Brad? Yeah, so the new one is 11,375 with the two batteries in the charger. And we can get the two batteries in the charger with the same warranty for 9,500. And the warranty would start off fresh? Yes. It'd be so, just like we're buying a brand new. We didn't say what, one year, five year, you know? I believe it's a five year. That's what combi tool is. That they are. Yeah. yeah. And we've had a few problems with it and we've contacted him. And he's come right over and gave us another unit and sent that one out and then brought it right back to us. Who yeah. Who do you, who is that? Um, it's Will that? Swartz out of Marshfield. It's a uh, Marshfield oh, rescue. Okay. No. Yeah. Yeah, he's Marshall's fire chief. Oh. Um, the regular company is PNP <coughs> oh. Rescue Tools. Yeah. He's a salesman for them. Gotcha. And they're based somewhere out west. What was the company? PNP Rescue. And it's Schwartz. Can you spell that for me? Um, <laughs> let me see if his name's on there. S C H W A R T Z or that. It's usually yeah. short. Uh, how about just use Marshfield Fire Supply? There you go. This company's name. <laughs> <laughs> um, we are definitely up on calls from last year. Last year we had 80, 82 or 83. Right now we're at 107. Um, back in July, we had almost 30 calls. Um, and we've been averaging between seven to 10 calls a month until we hit December. And thank God, um, we had two the other night. We went mutual aid to stow, and uh, the guys were sitting down there and they actually got to see some fire. They got toned out for a fire alarm down at the, one of the resorts and they actually had a chimney fire. Um, <laughs> <laughs> how, how big were the planes? Right? 30, 30 feet. Oh, really? Coming out of the chimney at Stoke Lake. So, 
So I guess the mutual aid does pay off. You know? Right. It's pretty shocking when you think you just want to go buy a land. Yeah, exactly. I bet. <laughs> Okay. Oh, yeah. You got anything to add in, Ryan? Chris? Correct. Oh. Oh. So, so before that, we would be. Yeah. One of those things when you got a hundred, when you got a hundred now. Yeah. Is that something we should do now? What? You know, we know you want to say something, so just say it. <laughs> That's what neutral aid is made for. And Morsel don't take that long to get the IPAR. So. I'm just saying that's what neutral aid's made for. You were pinned inside a car. I know it, but that's five ten minutes probably seem like well. Well, I'm just saying. The only thing I'll add to that, really, though nowadays, um, there's times that we go over to Morsel for mutual aid during the day because they only have one person show up. You know, it's everywhere. Johnson used to be the department we counted on, the whole Lamont County did for manpower. You call them now during the day. You're lucky to get seven or eight. Part and that's and that's the way it is all over. right. Because that's, you're not that's getting bone deer, right? Oh, but the neutral aid system is still correct. Bad. Correct. You you absolutely right. You know, mutual aid. You know, if you need them, they're there. But there's a chance that we call mutual aid, we might. You know. You know, somebody calls us for mutual aid. We we might not even have complete staff to send them. You know, so it, it's everywhere. Yeah. You know. You know, there's times during the day we have calls and there's two, you know. Yeah. So it's even at nighttime, you know, we got 16. Yeah. Yeah. I think we had a discussion in the past about uh, how to uh, improve that and what, you, what you've got and how to get people. Right. To, I do know the uh, fire council of Vermont is coming up with a thing that is i think it's in april they're going to be um having all the vermont departments do open houses and uh and try to get some new members to all these departments so um and i know the senator sanders has been trying to push that issue here in vermont trying to help get but it's just hard and nobody wants to volunteer especially nowadays you know somebody that has a family they're working two three jobs and we ask them to come in and volunteer their time you know with the price of everything north north like parts got that all the jobs yes yeah every every yeah. apartment in the Lowell county has a set of jobs it wasn't like years ago we only had one set of right the Lowell county right you also had about what 25% of the population in cars on the road. But I'll tell you what, you'd be surprised how many how many times that one Jaws went from Cambridge all the way to South. Did you, have you gotten more junior we got firefighters? Four. I know you talked about that and that was- We got, oh, got four. Oh, nice. uh, well, I'm losing my daughter. Um, she, oh. She's turned 18, but she's moved to St. Johnsbury with her mother Yeah, there. So um, trained her all up. Now she's leaving. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, and she, she's a senior this year and she's getting ready to go to college and I don't foresee her yeah. coming back. So, um, so we'll be losing her, but we have two female cadets and a, another young man oh, there. So. What's the range of age? For 14, the, 14 to 17. 14. So 14, it's either cadet. I get the titles mixed up. 14 to 16 is either cadet or junior. And then um, 16 to 17 is whatever the other one is. Yeah. And you have an outreach that goes to the school? We haven't yet. Um, that's the thing. Before I do it, I want to talk to the other departments because being Memorial, we've got other department uh, counties, towns that come there. So it's not just Pike Park. <clears throat> it's all 
they don't want to put something together and go down there and make a presentation or put posters up and then have a kid from Cambridge call their department and say, hey, we want to join, you know. And they may not. And I think most of the departments have cadet members, but I just want to make sure we're not opening something um, up, you know. That's right. But that process is high on your priority list. Yes. Yeah. But yeah, that's right. Help kids, and then they can't join a, the department in right. town. But we have a mutual aid <laughs> meeting tomorrow night. Oh. And uh, I, I am going to bring that up and just, yeah. you know, and make even make the invitation out to the, the other departments if they want to participate. Yeah. They can. Have you ever tried ads in the paper or anything like that? For we did years ago and we never got anything out of it. <laughs> That or that'd be a community service announcement on WLBB. That's uh, for nonprofit municipality, that type of thing. To another area. Well, even your Facebook page. Yeah. I mean, that's um, really social media. I have right? noticed there on Facebook that a lot of the other departments, like Highgate Fire, they just uh, put a thing out on their Facebook page um, asking for volunteers, and it had everything. Um, spelt out for them there, and uh, I'm going to come to them and see where they got that information and see if we can get that on our Facebook page. Yeah. And, and that, what number do you got? We got 16 firefighters and four cadets and juniors. So, this guy that you're going to deal with with the jaws, he'll take the old ones back. Well, that was, that was my other thing. Uh, he won't take them back. Um, I know if you look on um, some of the fire health sales things, a lot of departments are selling their old stuff, even though it doesn't work. Some of the departments already have that equipment and they'll buy it for, you know, like say the, the engine is still good. You know, they'll buy it for the engine. So I was wondering if we could put that for sale see if we get a little money. And if we do, put that back in towards the reserve fund. Oh, yeah. Well, they're all Yeah. That's the problem. So it could be good for somebody that right. has one. Somebody that has one. Hey, you know, you are going to sell a small dollar. You're talking. Yeah, you might win a box. Yeah, you're, yeah. you're not going to get a lot. So, so that, that was my thought on that try to sell it and get a little instead of trashing it. Because if you go look at it, it almost looks brand new still. But unfortunately, we, we can't get parts and can't get it serviced anymore there. So maybe there's another department that's having a different problem than what we are and they can purchase it for a small amount and fix their problem and get another couple of years out of it. Uh, it doesn't hurt to try. Right. Okay. Any other question? No. Nope. You want to motion on the ninety-five? Yeah, if I could. Yeah, that was before you can buy. Uh, and that's. I'm. I guess if he's happy with it, but it's not too much more for a new one. Minus maybe five hundred. Huh? Maybe minus five hundred too. Yeah, yeah. because it's so I'm just saying that. About it's totally up to you. Totally up to you guys. You know. If the warranty is the same, I, I vote he goes with it. Okay. The same okay. thing, they're saving 18%. Okay. You know, he, we, he hasn't mentioned the truck yet. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He did. these he are did the bad guys on that. Just a little background on the reserves. Yeah. So, I think it was Brad did the right thing by going to Papa John and see if there's money in there coming yeah. at expense. The other question that goes with that is what is your near term? That's so all it is. You know, are you babying some boiler unit for thirty thousand or something? You know, so if your general, whatever Jen told you, mixes in good with this purchase and maybe keep in some left over. I right, we, there's still I can't remember what she said we had left over, but there was still money left over in it because what she wants to do is she was talking about rolling it over into a CD, mm -hmm. but she's waiting to find out what happens here. So. We can get a little little interest off it, but not yeah. much. But yeah. what little is better than nothing. Right. Okay. So right. that's the other part of that. Yeah. So yeah. Yes, come yeah. up with a good proposal, get some quotes if you can, make sure it makes sense for a 25 year old piece of equipment. And then what what about your other future? Right, right now, 
Yeah. I don't see anything in the future unless something yeah. breaks, you know. No, that's not, that was the only other yeah. discussion that when you guys have a presentation. Okay. I'll make a motion to to take the ninety five hundred dollars out of the reserve fund for the blue dogs. Your second, second, as long as the warranty matches. <clears throat> yeah. If not, then let's talk about the new one. Okay. Any other discussion? All in favor, saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Abstaining. Ayes have it. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank I'll let you. These guys <laughs> So, as you know, we've been talking about new trial. The other one is 2000. Well, you know, the one is 2000. But the brain's getting the last couple of years. Would be the last year we could expect it. So, we've been getting prices. So they range from, but everybody's having a hard time giving you, they can give you an idea. And, uh, yeah. and, yeah. and then two years, yeah. but once you sign a contract, like if it gets approved in marriage, and we call them up and say, yeah, we want it, and you sign a contract, that's your break. Oh, okay. But they, I mean, they're anywhere from what, a year and a half, two years? Yeah. Out. So we get anywhere from five, 35 to 606 of the prices, three different. This is the thing. What's, what's cab chassis on it? Freightliner. Single, double. Double. Just replacing our engine. You know, that's one thing I think we got to talk about. <clears throat> with the prices of everything, do you guys really need a double with all of what you got up there and what we got in North Hyde Park? I was on that fire department quite a few years. Brian and myself, I really don't see a double man cab that the taxpayers have paid for with all the equipment we got in North High Park and in High Park. And we did talk about that, and I talked about it pretty big when I was with when Eddie was chief. And Eddie was leaning towards a single man cab again. I mean, you're going to save quite a bit of money right there. Just by going to single ask them cab. to see what the price difference is between the single. And well, the I'm just saying you got to think today the way things are. Oh, I, I mean you're here. up to six hundred thousand dollars a year. If you could cut the price down in a single man cab, you've got the rescue truck, you've got your pickup. I mean, you've got the tankers truck. and you've got the rescue truck. You got the the pickup. Pickup. Uh, yeah, two people. Yeah, but you get another small person, you might be up here three in there. But but I did I did talk pretty hard when Eddie was in there about this, and you know it's really something to think about. From I mean, a single cab to a, I mean a lot of times Brad just said it a few minutes ago. <laughs> you know, a lot of times you only got one two guys there. You know, a lot of times it's, you got ten fifteen. Well, I know it, but you know everybody's not going to jump into all them trucks anyway. I, I understand where you're coming from, Ellie. Um, I am going to say that a uh, three-man crew on a structure fire, rolling in first due, is not an effective crew to attack that fire. But the other truck is usually pretty much right behind you if you got the manpower. If we have a driver for it, you got the manpower. Yes, that's true. But the next one's going to be a tanker. You're looking at probably two guys. We well, can always call them and say, hey, how much is a single man cab versus double man cab? Well, that's that's, that's, that's kind, kind of what I'm thinking. Yeah. Yeah. If you yeah. would do that, yeah. I would please. Well, well, I mean, we'd be willing to explore it and just see what the price difference is and see if it's worth the extra money to go double cab. Or... I mean, you... so I was thinking that we would go, I mean, we're thinking if you, because like I said, these guys are like, we're going to give you a number, which is going to be, they added some money into it because obviously the price of things. So if we just went for six hundred, and hopefully we can, we'll be. I mean, we're going to be less than that. Look at look at the look at the business. But I'd hate to, I'd hate to go in for five fifty and then say, oh, man, we can't buy nothing for that now because of the price. Of, I mean, they said they right. I mean, they said that last year they. They went from what four twenty five to, mm -hmm. I mean, they've gone up one hundred fifty thousand dollars. Everything year. has. I know, and it's <laughs> out of their control. 
everything else. I am, I am not a person to ask you any of this. I'm just asking the link as we just sat through on that part. <laughs> <laughs> I have not wanted to judge. They're, they're going to like a mini truck. Is That's probably not an option for what you guys. I don't think at this point. Not, not for a front line pump. They're looking at that for a water supply and backup truck. And I totally agree with that for like a okay. supply truck. Um, Can you tell me what you have? Like, what do we have for fire trucks? Because I don't know. So tell me what we have. We have one engine. five man cab. Okay. Engine, engine one. One five man cab. Okay. That's engine one, right? Engine two. Engine two. Okay. We got engine one. Okay. Engine a three man cab. Okay. We got tanker, three man cab, and a brush pickup truck, which is two man cab. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. Two man. Back. Back in the day, <laughs> back in the day, they had a rescue truck, but they wanted to get rid of it. So we ended up giving it to North Lake Park. So I tanker. Hate tanker fits pieces. two. Three. three. Tanker fits three? Yeah. Three men can fit in the front of that fire truck? I would it's hope so. Well, I'm looking at the three of you thinking you well, can sit in the well, front no, of a Don't look at us. <laughs> I mean, I'm not, I'm just saying. No, you can fit three grown oh, dogs. Okay. Okay. But we're I mean, I want to okay. drive to Massachusetts. But. Well, not <laughs> to a fire right. in town. Okay. So this truck is replacing the engine two. Engine five, two. Okay. Five main guys. Or potentially, that's your plan. <clears throat> okay. Thank you. Now I'm caught up. And it's pretty much okay. identical to the truck we got. I mean, within a few changes, but we really. Why you meant the wheel when that truck working? First, first thing we did. working for we we started to invent the wheel and I'm like, why? This truck is working pretty good. It's designed pretty good. Why not just kind of? It is time to do it. Though. I agree. It's oh yeah. Okay. First thing I mean, you, like I said, you're talking two years from now before right. you even take right. When the company reps would come into our station, we'd walk them right out and show them this truck and say, you know, crew that built this truck knew what they were doing. And they spec it out well, and it's done its job, and it's done its job well. Make us something very similar to this, as close as we can get. Right. So that's where we're at with trying to replace this truck with something as close to it. Is there a budget to replace the truck currently? Is it yeah. 25 years, correct? Well, wow, that's a life expectancy is 20 to 25, and that's because it always seems to move a little bit. This right. might be 20. Five at the high end, by the way, in that window, right? Yeah. So just you're going to be 25 by the time you, yeah, yeah, it's in, the, in this budget. Mm -hmm. I didn't even review 100% fail on me, but do we have them? Oh, like a, we we have have fund? in a truck fund, right? So, how does the expenditure come for us? Like, what what am I like for him proposing this? What are we looking at for us? I mean, are we, we go to the taxpayers, we have to go to the taxpayer on a 20 year goal. Okay. No, so no, right? typically. You make use of the uh, low interest loan of later Vermont, which is an equipment fund for two percent, like which is one hundred ten thousand max, right? And then you look at your reserve, which if you're putting enough money every year, it's your last part of your budget you're going to be working on. You have all these uh, reserve fund appropriations down in there. You haven't been doing really well because all the pressures are chewing away at that capital savings account, if you will. So we're Probably gonna have a mix of low and cap. Oh, because of the highway. No, this is operating within the fire. Highways are open. Fire, fire equipment was one thing that Brad used. This was fire apparatus or fire vehicle fund. And that is, I think the projection that we had for fire was uh, a, a short term loan. So, a short term loan to make up the difference. Between whatever you think is available in the reserve at the time. So you still go to the voters because the fire equipment is not the same as highway equipment, low and approval process. Mm -hmm. Fire equipment will go to the voters just like North High Park did last town meeting and said, What do you think you'll need for a loan? Ryan was suggesting 600, which is the maximum you'd ever need. But we know we're probably going to have close to half of that between the 2% loan and the capital reserve. So the, the really that commercial loan that takes you up to the five, six percent is what you really don't want to do, but you, I think you might have to do it. So we're projecting out, obviously, but when you go to town, I mean, when we bought this truck, I think it was 200,000 
Yeah. Just wanted to show you. But we need to decide. Years, right? it's, it's yeah. We need to decide your question by that was when we stopped. What goes in that yeah. article? Got how many years? We try to get fire at five years. Don't try to go twenty five. We try to get it down low enough where the capital reserve can, can pay that on the reserve fund. Doesn't hit the operating budget. Gotcha. But you do have to put the annual money still away to pay that stuff. And yeah. the, the tanker that we got was all grant money. Was it ten percent max? Maybe. Oh yeah. really? Yeah. 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 So we only paid like ten grand for that brand new truck. Oh no kidding. Yeah. That was a grant that Eddie got. Yeah. Eddie got. Oh no shit. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> right? Is there any ARPA money that you That was shortly after the yes. end. Another source. Just like we're talking about, I would have some ARPA money, fire, ARPA money for the yeah. uses that burden on the taxpayers. That's one of the Yeah, we get North Lake Park show. Right. That's exactly yeah. what I was thinking. Yeah. <clears throat> what usually goes on the truck that makes it so you have to replace it? You said the frame. This is the frame. Android. Usually that's when they spin around all the time. They but go in, they wash them. Oh, this right. is getting, getting to a point. <laughs> Why don't we take and have them uh, undercoated with a lifetime warranty on them and then eliminate that problem and not have to spend so much? You can. And you can have it updated. I mean, if they got a lifetime warranty on an undercoat, I don't know if they've ever heard of that. <laughs> they did that. So you can go with a custom cab and they will do a 30 year warranty, 25 year warranty? 30. 30 year, warranty. 30. 30 year warranty on the frame. So just yeah. add another 600 to it. It's a galvanized. It's a galvanized. Yeah. Yeah. I can imagine what the price would be on that. Yeah. Well, yeah. they said 30 years. for yeah. a, yeah. a custom cab at about $100,000 to $150,000. Yeah. And now you're up around seven fifty. <laughs> and and to be so, honest, can we do look at that? 25, 25, 25 what, years, Brian. That now you're starting to talk about pumps bowling. You're starting to talk about more than just that. Well, well motors. Motor, so motor, well, I asked the question. Yeah, I right. asked the question. Where yeah. do yeah. you usually go? Yeah, yeah, you get a frame, and then then it's a motor, and then you just got one. Okay. We just rebuilt it. I was going to say we just. Uh, so, so your answer is not this, just the frame. It's the motor and other Trigger, things on it. Trigger. We just soaked nine thousand dollars in it back right. in June. Yeah, right. Into uh, this truck that we're replacing. Yeah. Which was too a rust issue when the transmission cooler went. And, you know, it was a. So, what's going to happen to number two? Number two. What year is that? Mm -hmm. uh, isn't it number two to be replaced? Yeah, and then two of them. Yeah. Can we so, we, it? Is there something um, we can do with it to recoup? We can try to sell it. Well, you're trying to go for a month, but well, you're they do have a company that. Okay. Sells. NR1. Yeah, isn't that so what, it's uh, like a broker. Northside Park did. They had I don't know like they did, but no, they're private sale right now. They're trying to private sale. Right. Really? We talked, we talked about that. We did talk about that. They they, yeah. they they went to the guy and the guy gave him a number and then he said it was a private sale and they thought they'd give up 15% more. Right. Yeah. So they do they do have a broker that sells all they do is sell you right. fire truck. And they probably take a little commission off it and we can sure go that route because we've tried selling them outright. I think the last one we got a thousand bucks for it. We sold to the village of like fire for like a thousand bucks. Still sets up there. No, they park it. No, no, field days. <clears throat> field days got it. Oh, okay. Jake Tatro bought one, and I think that was like 1500 bucks or something. But so, but yeah, no, we would try to. We asked them about trading in that. Like, so, what we need, what we need next, if we need some hard numbers, what's the truck worth and trade in? What, what, you know, so what do we need? We need hard numbers. So, we do take this to the town, and we buy our end, we got end of. January to make decisions for our budget. And Ron said we could take some of the ARPA money possibly yeah. to, uh, to put towards it too. Okay, you're in the sweet it. window where you have the other pot of money hitting yeah. up here. You got 600000 left there, but I'm not saying what you should do all that. We used to talk about every little dollar. It right. right. works out the plate, sir. <laughs> <laughs> I'll got to get out of here. <laughs> the chance of money. And you'll get prices on. We well, can, uh, can see if they'll, I mean, they can get us a price. And they said Freightliner International, about the same money. Every single guy we talked to, they said, they said, no matter what you, I mean, you can go with Freightliner International, there's no, they're all the same price. So, yeah, you're not having a hard time getting Yeah, you yeah, don't know why, cars. don't you? <laughs> you're having a harder time getting the guys to drive the bigger trucks. I live with North Park, Colorado. See, guys don't want to drive the bigger trucks. So that's why they're going to 
a smaller frame. We don't have a phone. No, several guys. Yeah, we got several guys with CDLs. Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah, we got five or six guys anyway with CDLs. Great. Well, well, really issues issues issues. Issues. Yeah, they don't have as much of an issue for during yeah. the day. Well, I mean, you're right in town, so. Right. We got more dedication over here. Apparently, yeah. Well, <laughs> well we got or lucky. See, we people got people that working. work close there. Like, yeah. where do people work and don't have Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. really. I mean, where's where do people go? There. That's huge. Yeah. 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 Right. <laughs> You know, that's their problem with theirs. There's no industry. I mean, not we have a lot of industry, but I mean, yeah, we're pretty close to most of it. Yeah, so right. We got a few guys that work in March, though. Exactly. Yeah. There's nothing like Paris, like, yeah. Back so we're going to figure out where we get all the numbers together. You know, what are we going to I mean, I yeah, we'll get all the women to see like the price difference on, on, on the main three main cab versus the five main cab just to see. Okay. And then early January. Yeah. yeah. And uh, hard to get that stuff together in a week, but. No, first meeting. Yeah, look at that. Yeah, I mean, January is the first select board meeting after the Yeah, we should have a lot. Okay. I mean, I don't foresee us spending the 600. I think, but well, like I said, I hate to ask for less and then, oh, what are you getting now? I mean, I'd rather get the money back. <laughs> yeah. than Never know what's going to happen between now and two years. Mm -hmm. Well, no, once you sign the contract, you're dead. That's, that's the price. Frozen. So, like yeah, in marriage, if they agree, you know, if they do it, yeah. we'll call them up. And How long is it going to take to get a cabin chassis for that? They said, they said, a year and a half to two years to build the whole truck. Do they have chassis like they did before? I have no idea. Some of the manufacturers have chassis pre model. Yeah, some of them do. But well, that's what right. these did before. Yeah. Um, yes, you guys got to ask that question. Yeah. Well, we did. We asked him, you know, how long from when we signed the contract, um, how long? And they said, a year and a half to two years before you, before you take delivery of it. And that includes, I mean, they come up, obviously, they go through the whole truck, pump test it, and show you how to run it. And all three manufacturers that we talked to, well, one of them was Allegiance, which is Clark now, so they do all the repairs down there, which is cool. Freightliner's a good truck. International, they're all the same. We're going to have the same issues with everybody. But as far as like the fire truck part of it, like pump or anything like that, they do right at Allegiance. Which is handy to have a local. Right. And then you want to say, I think St. Alman. Yeah, St. Alman. Um, yeah. Where's the other one? Uh, New Hampshire? No, no, New Hampshire. New Hampshire. Uh, anyway, they're fairly cool. They don't get built here, here, but they get serviced right here locally. Okay. And they do fly you out to look at the truck when they when they're done. They do well, with you? They fly you out there? Really? Two people. Well, well, two people. Truck six hundred thousand dollars. I know. Well, I'm thinking, I'm thinking that, but usually they don't give you anything. So that's kind of nice. You should be able to get something. <laughs> the final inspection. Better give me dinner too. Thank you. Oh right. That's right. You ready to make my route too? Where's the truck being built? Well, each one's different. Yeah. Wisconsin. That doesn't need to be one. One was in Florida. Yeah. One was in Michigan. Wisconsin. Yeah. Yeah. You don't want to drive out to Wisconsin. Blow up. Blow up. Yeah. Um, the E1 in Florida. E1 in Florida. Well, the flags are very high. Yeah. They have a ton in New York. Hamburg, New York. Oh, that's not bad. New York is not even good. Yeah. No. I don't know how to do that. Here's my name. I'd say so. Yeah. Hey, gentlemen, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, don't get that price. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thanks, Ed. There he is. He's up next. Been waiting patiently over there. How much snow are we going to get? Hopefully, that's tell you tomorrow. <laughs> no, I meant this weekend. This weekend? Six is a lot. Hey, Monday. Really? Yeah, Monday. <laughs> for a big snow. I think I can guess the next six inches of northeastern. 
Jesus, right? So this is just trying to clarify from the last meeting, and I didn't actually feel I was very clear on the fifth and July what it's going to add to the budget. So we had it yeah. at the twenty percent, and the one that I was proposing was the the four and a half percent increase. This is subtracting what you're currently. This is the out. five full time crew members, right? Yeah. This is taking out part time. The top, the top is showing no change. He's got right now currently has a seasonal fit. Yeah. So that's saying a seasonal fit costs him thirty two thousand. Then you go down the, the next portion of that is your increase. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I can't speak for you, Mark. But no, go ahead. Right. You're doing a great job. Really the bottom yeah. portion, the bottom portion of this is going to a fifth full time man and saying a fifth man is going to cost us eighty eight thousand. But with the credit of the thirty-one thousand nine hundred, it's going to cost a total of fifty-six thousand. Right. Added. Right. Yes. Ah. Uh, there's three scenarios. Good job, Matt. The three. There are three scenarios there, depending on what you do with your summer. Right. There's fifteen thousand in the budget that you can play with. Well, what we talked about last time, you yeah, still want they you still want somebody to mold. Yeah. Uh, that's what I'm saying. You, if you right. take that away, you're gonna. Put it on the five man crew, which is supposed to be doing real oh, all right. dirt work, you know. Yeah. Road road crew. Right? Yeah. So if you don't have the summer auxiliary. So it might end up costing you more than 50. Well, it's there. But, it's there. but just remember those numbers are all within the wages. There's no yep. there, you have a ton of other line items you have to worry yep. about. This is just the wage change. I, I, it was a little convoluted whether the fifth person was caught a twenty percent increase in the budget. Well, that yeah, and it's not. It's those three scenarios. Yeah, might come up with a good idea. Yeah. You want to do that? No, we're not looking at yeah. we're not looking at a twenty percent increase. We're looking at really a five percent. Well, everything well, well, the overall budget <laughs> is. So I just want to break it out. It didn't sound good with that, and even the taxpayers are like they just. Up their budget twenty. No, the salt. The field, my salt went from seventy. Seventy-seven. I've got it right here. Up to ninety thousand this year. No, oh, just under ninety thousand this year. But right. Yeah. So this you know, the fuel twenty percent is still real. That's a real thing. Right. I mean, this just breaks out. Parts the gone. The idea. Right. Yeah. Okay. Well, so that that wage right. could be in that because. Susan's the one who brought this up last time. Right. Yeah. 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 She was jumped right on that. It still works. Yeah. There, which, still when you and I talked, yeah. what was yeah. said was this was a great thing. Well, at least you just brought it out. So at least everybody's, it's not hidden in there somehow. Yeah. That's what it, yeah. what it comes which, to. Which is not nowhere near as bad as you think yeah. because the, when you take it on its own. Yeah. It's 5%. <clears throat> salt's gone up. Freaking parts have gone up, fuel's gone up. Yeah, I get hit everywhere this year. <sighs> Everybody did. You know, it's, you're not the only one. It's the way it is. Cutting edges, they're gone up. Tires are hard to get. And and, and, <laughs> and the year everything goes up, the state won't let us jump onto their yeah, you know, yeah. contract. <clears throat> and I'd be curious to see how much more the state does. But I, then I heard, uh, well, what it sounded more still state rods getting about the same price I am for salt. So they didn't get a big deal from what I was under. Cargo was telling me, Tim was telling me that they what they took the contract at $71 a ton, I think it was, the state. And they didn't do the towns this year. But I don't sound like it's everywhere. Wait a minute, here. I don't know. I don't know how the state contracts work. Well, they're different, they're, different. they're capitalizing on the salt because they got do boys. No, no, they got they got compass has got the contract. But the only contractor around here that will, is a salt is Barrett's now. They bought do boys. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Oh, so what are they doing? <laughs> There's no competitors. I sit in that office every day. I'm avoiding myself from that conversation. <laughs> <laughs> well, think about it. 
I, I don't I know too much to speak. <laughs> there, there's there's a lot that goes on with that. So there's railroad insurance that they're not using that that self fit at all in Middlesex. I didn't think they were. I was down there on the weekend. A because they can't get it. But the trucks are there. That's <laughs> Various trucks are there. There's still no, there, there's, no there's, there's no there's no trains there. Uh, they can't get the trains because of when did we decide? We were we're looking at this looking at the city. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But your your choice would be spring. My choice would be spring. Well, you remember what I suggested there mm -hmm. before? Yeah. You were here, right? Yeah. What'd you think about that idea? Can you repeat what you suggested before so I can know what you talking there? Here we go. Might not have been here. We're staying in we're staying in code here. And I and I Morris go me, 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 me. I suggested it is to get somebody on board for is see if we could hire somebody and then not pay the 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 uh, benefits. Oh yes, okay. So a temporary position. That's Boy, I'm glad. I, I'm glad you remember. Uh, there you go. <laughs> well, I didn't read Boris Cole. I'm sorry, but you know that's something we can think of. Yeah, I totally, I but, totally on board with that. Yeah. And the other thing, depending on where the yeah. winter comes out, you know, we may have money left in, you know, the overtime fund or whatever. We don't know where we're going to come in at. So right, I'm still a big shot in the dark right now. Boy, it looks like you're hoping for the best. That couple of weeks aren't looking that good. I don't think we look at the 15 day forecast. It's not looking that you good. Can't, you can't, you can't look it that way. Um, and that costs you more money. Than done. Done. No. Garfield needs a bag. Probably going to have to get tailgated up through and spread in some holes to try to fill some in. That rain just before and that warm up spell did not help. That's that. Then it goes up. You don't have to get it. You don't have enough time to get it. That's why we're going to come in next year for two graders. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Fire truck. And another person. Yeah, two graders. Yeah. That is a good decision. Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad you clarified. Um, um, well, so that's not, I just wanted to add that to that. Yeah, it was so not, helpful. I think it's a little bit clearer than the last one. <clears throat> Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you, Mark. Okay. Poor Mary. She's been sitting through all. You there, this. Mary? <laughs> she I'm in the fascinated. Thank you. Thank you for all you do. <laughs> you didn't fall asleep on us? Oh, gosh, no. But I've covered my notes with doodles for an hour and a half. So I'm not sure I'm going to remember what I wanted to say. <laughs> I do the same thing. <laughs> Um, so I'll try and be quite brief because really uh, a lot of what I want to say I can I can do later um, after you get through the budget. But we finished our work, not in Hyde Park work, middle of October, and then we all kind of agreed to take a bit of a break. And so we're not going to meet again until January 18th. And then we'll start to plan for the 2023 season. But you guys are doing budgeting now. And so I... I didn't want to lose a chance to put a line item in for some money for what we're doing. So I'm calling it like a placeholder line of $3,000 that I want to ask you to put aside for not in Hyde Park. I can't tell you exactly what it's for, but I can tell you the kinds of things that we've come up with and that we know we want to try and do for 2023. So can I just kind of run through a little of that briefly and Yes. Yeah. Okay. So um, just to put that in context, we haven't asked the town for money in the past. In 2021, we spent about $800. And in 2022, about $1,000 that was just, you know, donated, raised, whatever. And that was mostly to just buy supplies and materials a license for a software program, I, I, you know, just, and much of that stuff won't need to be repeated. Um, some of it will be repeated in 2023, but that's not the main issue about asking you for some money. The, the bigger things are that we've now got two seasons under our belt. And um, I mentioned this once before, that 
we think there's a case to make about having some addition of her, the use of herbicides as a as a thing in the toolkit that we can use and i'll just give you the 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 easiest example of that is i i may have mentioned this before but there's um there's a small patch of knotweed at I, th I think the intersection is, correct me if I'm wrong, does Grimes Road, Whitlock, uh, uh, Whitcomb Island Road and Barnes Road all kind of come together sort of at one place? Yeah. Yep. Okay. So there's a small patch of knotweed on a, uh, on a culvert there that's like in a bunch of riprap. I don't know how long it's been there. Mark spotted it this summer and brought it to my attention. And it's a super steep bank. It's, um, and it's, it goes way down. So there's no way, you know, one of us should be clamoring down or if we clamored down at once to try and pull the knotweed, we should we shouldn't go every couple of weeks down that thing. It's just not safe and not smart. And yet it's a small patch of knotweed. So if you do something about it now, it's quite a neat tactical thing to do. If you leave it alone and do nothing with it, it's going to get big. It's going to cause um visibility problems, it's not mowable, it, it could cause erosion issues, it's that kind of thing. And there are a couple of more places like that around town that if it, there isn't an easy mechanical control solution to, to the knotweed. And um, so to do that, you need a licensed herbicide applicator. And I, I've been in touch with a couple, there are a couple around who are, are good and know a lot about invasives, but you, you need to pay them to do the work. And there's a whole thing that follows from that about how we would leverage them, whether you could leverage them to, you know, oversee volunteers. And we're just not there yet on clarifying that idea. But that that's that's one line, that's one idea that that's going to cost a bit of money. It's not hugely expensive. I mean, it's an it's a known number you pay by the hour. You have to pay for the 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 glyphosate. Um there's an argument whether you pay a little bit for some equipment, but that's, you know, that can wait till another time. The other thing is, um, this is a little bit more of a fantasy thing, but it's, it's, it's very real and very practical and it leads into the gamble property. But I, I would love to find a way to pilot a program of having goats uh, somewhere as a control experiment for invasive plants, because I've, I've seen there's anecdotal evidence. I've seen evidence of cows and goats controlling it. And, and it, it's just a great natural thing to do. And, and it would be good to have a pilot for so many reasons, but, you know, to do that costs a bit of money. I, I'm not, a, I don't keep animals. So, it, you know, it's maybe not something we're going to be able to, to bring off this season, but I would love to spend the winter trying to find some and, Wendy, I see Wendy is on listening and she's been near her the whole time too. And uh, Wendy has pretty much single-handedly done the knotweed work on Cooper Hill Road and the upper end of McKinstry Hill Road. And she's been doing a lot of goat research, but, you know, we'd need to maybe get some electric fence. I don't know. And, and maybe, as I say, we won't be able to get that to happen, but it brings in the whole gamble property, which is such a great example of what happens when you don't control an invasive plant uh, to my, I, I don't know when the town came into the land. I think it was 2013 or something, but to my knowledge, nothing has happened there to, to really maintain the land or keep it under control. And in 2021, when we started this work, it was, it was a boon for us because there was an empty place and, and we could without very little risk to, you know, plant spread or, you know, invasive, being too worried about taking knotweed there, we were able to do some things there and, and it was, it was useful for us, but increasingly it's just, it's knotweed and a, there's a um, invasive rose up there. Can't think, it, uh, can't think what it's called, but increasingly it's not even usable to us because I mean, mainly I'd have to take my brush cutter there and whack everything back so that we can access the place. And, you know, I'm happy to do a lot of the stuff that I'm doing on a volunteer basis, but I don't think mowing the gamble property is really how I want to spend my time. And 
in a, in a, it'd be a really cool solution to be able to get some goats up there with the adjacent property and keep that all under control. As I say, I don't know if that's something we can bring off, but otherwise, again, I don't think gamble property maintenance really falls under the mission of not in Hyde Park, but it's there. And it's something that I think we need to talk about. I guess I feel responsible to talk about it because I happen to go up there and see that land. Um, so the, a couple of other things that are on the list for next year, we have a digital map that we worked on this year. Again, that was entirely voluntar voluntary. This um, Liam Paws, who, who is you know a techie, mappy sort of guy, just totally volunteered to create this map for us. And it's, it's fantastic. And I'd like to be able to show it to you. I don't think that's gonna cost us any money, but it's on the list for uh, next year. And I suppose the only other place that money is going is the 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 most um, interesting and successful program that I'm aware of of a town uh, getting all over knotweed and invasive plants is Warren. I think I've mentioned them to you before. The Warren Conservation Commission. They were lucky enough to get started before, um, well, before COVID and before town meetings disappeared. And so that you know it was a great way to have a big public discussion about your landscapes and how much you care about them and the roadsides and, and that sort of thing. And um, so they got $10,000 from the community and they were able to start up an intern program. And so they've had interns working uh, every season since then. So I guess that's maybe three summers and it's, it's a, it's a great program. I, I don't know if we'd be able to create, so I'm not sure I'm up for trying to, to manage something like that, but that is something that um, we're going to talk about this year because, uh, yeah, because it's it's a good idea, and if we could make that happen, that would that would need more than three thousand dollars, though. Um, and then you know, a little bit of money maybe to bring more people on board and try and um, leverage things up, and maybe we'll have town meeting this year, which would be free and and a good way to do it. So. Those are the kinds of things that are on our minds, and and I'm speaking now kind of as myself because we haven't really come together as a committee, but we will do in January, and uh, yeah, that's what's on my mind. Oh, and just as a context for that, also, I I can tell you that um, we keep track of all the time that we spend pulling knotweed. We don't keep track of the time that we're you know, traveling to places, scoping out things, chasing down rubber roofing, uh, you know, all of that. But we have 200 hours this past summer of just pulling knotweed. And that excludes, um, oh, homeowners and, and some people who, who contribute who aren't really part of the committee. So we don't keep track of their time. And there are quite a few of those people who are regularly contributing. So, I'm guessing if you add all that other stuff in, it's probably twice that. So 400 hours of something. So anyway, that's that's what's on my mind. Okay, is there anything Wendy wanted to talk about? Um, well, can you hear me? I can, we can. Okay, um, well, I agree with everything with Mary and um, Maybe an internship program could be interesting because, you know, we have um, recruited a few people. Um, and as Mary says, no one's really knocking down our door. And if we want to keep uh, uh, small patches from spreading, if we want to um, not have these huge patches that are very difficult to control, we need more volunteers we need more help and uh we may have to pay some people um and th that's one of the things that we're trying to do too is just to get more people interested more landowners that would be interested uh to take care of their own land because right now some of the places we're taking care of you know we don't own that land it's you know it's other people's land and they are like great you're taking care of it um so anyways, uh, that's what we really want to do, get more people involved, get more message out there. And if we did have a, a little bit of money to 
you know, maybe put on some demonstration programs to, you know, to get maybe more people involved. Um, it would be something that would further our cause because um, I don't know if you're all familiar with the not weed program or, you know, not weed in, in Hyde Park, but if we don't do something to really keep it under control, it's just going to turn into Morrisville and Stowe where there's just so much there and it's just, it's horrendous. So I think it's a really important thing. And I know it's, you know, people don't want to spend a lot of money on things, but it's something for the environment and something for the future. And uh, so I, I guess that's it. That's all I need to say. Thank you. Thank you, Wendy. I just want to let the board know, as far as Mary and all of her her volunteers, Mary and I have a very good communication on all these spots. I called Mary up on, well, I started her with the Black Farm Road, but she probably really loved me for it. That was a very big pass, but as Ryan can tell, we don't go down there and cut underneath the guardrails. They have it always cleaned up for us. They've done a very good job. I told Mary about the one, like she said, it was actually it's just before you get to the Grimes Road, once you talk about the steep bank, is the cross culvert there just before between the power plant road and Grimes Road. That's where she's talking. Okay. She tackled that. I found another spot up on the Barnes Road. She tackled that. I sent her to the Crossberry Town line. <laughs> she tackled that. So I just wanted to let you guys know that she does quite a bit for the highway park cars. And our right away, so we're not getting phone calls all the time. I've seen her times on second road. Yeah. 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 So I just, yeah. I really yeah. appreciate yeah. what yeah. they're hearing all the time. It doesn't go unnoticed, Mary. Yeah, that's for sure. Thank you. 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 Thanks, Mark. <laughs> And it's not just yep. Mary. There's a, there's a group of us, and I I, I think um, that Wendy's right. I do say that nobody's knocking down our door, but actually, a lot of people notice what we're doing, and they're very very grateful. It's a community problem, and everybody's happy to be a free rider, and I get that. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it'll. I think just backing up a second, just it is what I have in my mind, because it's hard to understand how to communicate things to you guys. I'm I'm just this whole idea. I've always feel you're so busy there and you've got so much stuff you have to do. And so I want to try and keep it short, but I really do want to have a chance. And so I, what I have in mind is sort of a series of coming short little bits to you over the next several months where I just rearticulate for you. In a, in a condensed way, what is the case for why this matters? And I can do that. I just need the chance to do it properly. And then after that, start to build the case for why um, tactical and conservative uh, use of herbicide is is important to to consider. And you know, little pieces like that, and I do them in chunks so that you know, you don't have to sit through a two hour conference on knotweed. That's my thinking anyway, if that works for you guys. Mm -hmm. Okay. So Mary would have to propose a budget still, right? You're gonna have to propose that. It's on the, it's on the table is 3000 for the reason that she said. Right. That if you all have more questions, uh, probably before you, you don't have an itemized budget, you have like a dream list of things right. you'd like to do, right? Then maybe Mary, that you would sort of refine that a little bit into categories like a couple um, line items herbicide, herbicide, public relations, uh, you know, committees, yes. appreciations, whatever appropriations for subcontractors, and, and just have that have that kind of resubmitted in more detailed manner for the January select board. And then she could speak at town meeting about it too. Yeah. Yeah, sure. I can do that. But I, yes, and I'll, tr I'll try and be more specific about what the numbers mean. But I guess what I had in mind, am I speaking? I mean, can you hear me? I yes. can hear you. Yeah. Yep. I, I couldn't remember if I'd unmuted. Um, is that, uh, you know, this $3,000 is in the budget. It's your money. I wouldn't, we wouldn't be proposing that it's ours to spend willy nilly, however we want. So for example, when a, when, you know, we get further along the planning things in, in 
next season and think, right, this is the guy we'd hire. These are the spots we'd think about. These are the hours. This is what it would cost. I can bring that to you when you reject it or accept it. I mean, it's, it's a budget's a budget. And I think the idea is that when you go to the voters, the concepts are there and within reason, you can adjust that and numbers can go up and down. Right. So I think that's what Matt's really asking. Hey, right. And and I'll I'll be honest with you, Mary. I've, I've run the sports committee stuff, so it's kind of I understand where she's coming from. I understand it. So basically, your committee. I mean, once once you once you establish a budget, you get to decide how you want to spend your money. So you wouldn't have to come to us for every expenditure. You know that that's the joyous part of having a committee, essentially. So right. Yeah, ideally, the committee runs their approved budget along the lines of their intended purposes or whatever. And if every committee came back from the select board, it would, we wouldn't get anything done here. Right. We well, okay. Yeah. I, <laughs> I <don't know>. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Because, uh, because she's a new line item, does this have to go to the town? No, it would be, it would be, it would be a select board, but okay. No. Yeah, but your budget to decide what you want to do. Outside agency, yes, yeah, so it would go. But you know, if you and, and took, again, it to the, took it to the taxpayers, you might end up with more. Right. And and, and I, I want to throw this out there just just because, Mary, you're, you're part of it. You, you wear another hat as well. But obviously, when you start talking herbicides and you're, you're like, um, Wendy mentioned <laughs> being on other people's property and stuff. Obviously, that's going to really resource you to public notice and all that stuff too. So, well, yeah. So, and and actually, I, I think the 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 way Wendy described it isn't maybe quite accurate in in the sense most of the stuff we're doing. There are a couple of properties where people uh, have um, big bits of knotweed, but pretty much everything we're doing in the main focus of what we're doing is in what it'd call the right of way, the town right of way, the roadside. And it's, it's that where we're doing a lot of the work. It just so happens that that's somebody else's land. And yeah, I, I, there's, there's a lot of regulation about it and there's a lot of different notice and I, I'm generally familiar with it, but we need to be, yeah, very, very careful and very um, uh, respectful of all of that. So um i'm totally tonight's meeting there are, there are people that feel that we make some decisions that we necessarily don't make so i just want to make sure that obviously with you becoming a, a new entity in my opinion adding this entity and then adding a, a, a herbicide or whatever you know those are decisions essentially that we're making at the town we want, we want to respect people's landing which is in Completely agree with that. I think if I heard it correctly, you're saying that that it, if we would be doing it as a committee, we'd be acting on behalf of the town and we have to be respectful of if, if somebody was not wanting that happening in their ditch, for example. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. I totally agree with that. Yeah. Uh, so far, my experience is the other way around. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, I absolutely agree. And trust me, I mean, I am I am uh, extremely, you know, conservative on this. I I'm really just finding my way through it. And I I think the reason I'm I'm entertaining it at all is because I've now started to uh, research it a lot more and to speak to more foresters who uh, are doing things on invasive plants and anyway well th that's a big topic and um i i feel it needs um very specific and careful consideration so in that respect i will come back to that to to you as a board because you know we have to make a policy as a town about how we want to handle that agreed okay thank you thank you very much thank you Yep. I'm signing off now, even though I know you have a lot more interesting work to do. <laughs> oh, good evening, Joe. Good night. Good night. Later. No, the town order. Okay, so warrant. Everybody signed them, have No, I did not. So we can go on. That's what we're moving on to. Uh, to accept the warrants, need a motion. Accept the warrants. Second. Second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Abstaining? No, he's happy. Okay.
within the minutes. I don't know if everybody's had a chance to review the minutes. <clears throat> I did, but I can't vote on uh, what was it the night? I wasn't given it. You weren't here the 22nd. I can't. I can make no other clerk. I get this one. So you're going to abstain from what? From the 22nd. And what? And you're the night. So then I guess I'll make a motion to approve both of them. Because <laughs> I was at both of them. And so were you, right? <laughs> one of the one I was in last week, I wouldn't have had one nor the fire. Oh, department. fire department, right. Which is is that one of them? 12 seven. Oh, so. On here. <clears throat> so we're all we're all abstaining from one of them. Okay. Not me. <laughs> Except you. Apparently, who's, who's, who's the A plus girl right yeah. now? Attendance. <laughs> you are. <laughs> so I, I will I will second to approve the 22nd and the 7th meeting. I have seen from the 9th. That was you know, the first second. Second. Yeah. Second. Yeah. Second. Yeah. second. 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 You just have a motion to approve the three is right. Yeah. And, and I'll go along with the 9th and the 7th. So, yeah. 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 Okay. <clears throat> that was it. How did Eden do that? You got anything to say about that? Eden? No, yeah. remember the meeting. You Chats, got anything to say about that? Yeah. I said, yeah. Remember? Oh, I know. That <laughs> was how their motions went. That was you so weren't there for that. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> it was for last year. It was different. Wow. What are you going to say about that? Yeah. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> okay. Other business? The Monarch uh, parcel? Okay. What was your summary? You, you heard you talking about the summary of all this. What did it come down to? Um, so I, I did some exercise. Oh, I've I talked with I talked with Ken. I'm, I have yet to meet with Ken still because Ken, Ken did work at four, and I have yet to be able to be out of work to make it to his office that early. I am going to get it there. Um, done some exercises. There's, I did the, the top part of this is purchase price of two fifty. The bottom price is two ten. Um, yeah. I. The six point I ran I ran an exercise on a six point seven percent and five percent. They ran it on a ten year and a five year loan. Basically, if you look at the, the monthly payments and the yearly payments, the cost of the town basically a five year versus a ten year. Obviously, it's a big difference. Whether it's if, if at the two hundred at the ten thousand dollar acre, we're looking at a twenty to fifty thousand, and at the the two fifty, we're looking at a thirty to sixty thousand. So, and then obviously, I ran this at today's interest rate at six point seven percent. Uh, and then I ran at five percent, which was our original agreement with him. Um, You're saying six seven is new? That's what I came up with online that oh. said today's average. Yeah, no, I was wondering if, you, if anybody had tested with five seven or five six seven distinction. Yeah, so um, I haven't had any discussions with Manoj because I, 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 until talking with him, I didn't think I was going to meet with Manoj. I thought we were leaving that with Brian and Susan because they were liaison before. But, um, but when we leave this meeting or before we leave this meeting, I guess we should make sure whoever is meeting with Manash meets with Manash. I don't personally want to meet with him by himself. Um, I think I'd like to meet with Ken, just talk with him and see how he feels. My honest opinion is after meeting with Ken, we meet with Manash, talk to him about where he's at with what percentage, and then we can run the hard numbers. The hard number, what this comes down to is after 25 years of paying for it, if at a resale value, this We'd have to make somewhere in the three hundred thousand on the property at the two hundred at the two hundred thousand with lost tax revenue. The lost tax revenue on in ten years would be about sixty five hundred bucks. But that's on today's rate, not on three percent. So three hundred to three sixty is what we're looking to recover from the life of whatever we get out of the whole. Thing. Yeah, okay. exactly. But are we? And and if if we went the gravel pit route. So the bottom part of this is the gravel pit exercise. There's, I did an exercise on 300, 400, 500, 600,000 extraction. This road caught a cost stripping of 15,000 road construction that we'd have to rebuild the road, 75,000. And then I broke it in and divided the cost over the yardage to get a total cost. If you go to the middle of the page, you'll see the total cost per yard market today. It's looking at somewhere between six and 540. And today's purchase is about 1150. So it's about a five dollar savings per yard, and so then I divided that back and set, I set at five, which I meant to ask Mark what his actual extraction was. I believe it's actually twenty five hundred 
average gravel, not sand, gravel. Five and five, I think. I think they do about 10 to the little things okay. like that, five and five. Okay. So that's why I did that divided by 5,000 and it's a 12 year payoff at a $5 difference. So we would be about 37 years out. To make cost even. Got it. <clears throat> so that's okay, Garrett's to make that. Got it. We don't have good numbers on what's in the ground. <laughs> we do not know what's there. There's the we have no idea. I didn't put cost on testing. The other thing to, to, oh, to, right. to, to weigh on this is I threw in a $75,000 estimated design permitting because 2024, who knows what permitting is. I talked to the Wilson Consulting Engineers. He does a lot of this. He said he figured somewhere between 100 and 150. When I talked to Ken, he said, no way. So I just melted Dan, in the middle. Dan King spent for the auto. Was 75,000. Over 100. Oh, yeah. So I can... I mean, people don't understand the multi-sector permits. And I, I, I do I do so much of this. That's why I'm so passionate about it. That people, right now, businesses, anything over the three acres of impervious soil, you're having to go back to Act 250 and you're having to remediate your areas. I don't think people understand what that's going to do to business in this state. It is going to destroy it. We're dealing with it. So it's... Disneyland. Right. What's that mean? Yeah. Can you go more to me again? <laughs> well, the argument was all the way back to Act 200 in 1990 was that the state was through the legislature. This isn't some magical person <laughs> are implementing a Disneyland type of recreation, number one, tourism, you know, hospitality, second homes, and trying to figure out the worker problem is what they're, what they're running into now because yeah. they put so much effort into the other part. The other side. Now they have to backfill it and nobody can figure out where the workers are going to come from. Yeah. So they can their own problems years ago. They can't, they can't they're slowly coming in. They can't afford to be here. They're not coming in. They're coming in incarcerated. Through the Canadian border and through the southern border. <laughs> oh, yeah. They're, they're, we're working our way. Yeah. So the, this is the beginning of what we need to strive for if we're going to make an argument for the pit. And we need more information. Right. And again, yeah, at a pit, we still have a pit. On top of that, I read Otter through all of Ken Harvey's stuff. He has a, a pit at the extraction rate of what he put in there in 2004 or whatever, or 90, 90, 97. Uh, he started in the mid 90s. And then, the permits in the 90s. That, at the extraction rate, they were they were calling up 22,000 yards a year. Yeah, okay. We had 99 years. We haven't even hit, we've been running half that, yeah. which means the pit still has 99 years of sand. So my. And gravel. Correct. So essentially, what this is what this is telling us is basically, we, if, if the town decided we needed to go with just a, if we had to blend the gravel, even you know, we have a sand up there, and say we had to bring in a manufacturer. Starting to bring some rocks in. We are. Yeah. So bit. essentially, if we did, we we would essentially be forty years out of scratch without having a problem. <laughs> And, and still not be running out and still have 40 years of resource in front of us. And the way Harrison over there is going to, with the pit, you probably got twice as long over there in High Park, so as deep as they're going. Right. If, as we it's true. No, it is going deep. deep. Yeah. I mean, right. they haven't hit water yet. That would be the only thing that you'd have to worry about to shut that bit down. Right. Three, three or four feet is all water. Yeah. And, and, and that look is, at, well, I don't know what our I don't know what our what our original permit is for depth. We do have a permit on the depth. But you can you have to we, we have, have a floor. Yeah. So we have a floor in our permit. That's yeah. what I mean. It yeah. hasn't been looked at to go okay. deeper. That's what I'm saying. So we would have to amend our permit to to start talking about it. But again, again, one one of the big things that people and I talked about Ken went on the phone. One of the people don't understand. Is to absorb a hundred thousand dollar engineering cost in one year time. Two, I mean, we'd have to bond that. So us as a town, we would have to bond that, or we'd have to do something, right? We, we, we couldn't just absorb a hundred thousand dollar engineering cost just to put. Not right in. now. Yeah, you have to plan for it. So right. Yeah. So reserve. You know, right. we, yeah. so we would we'd have to look at this. This this purchase would be a ten year purchase, and then we have to look at a ten year engineering reserve. We, we, we get work. we get all the information yep. often can and often Howard yep. and take it back to the taxpayers. 
That was that's the way I'm reading. It. I think that I think this has changed enough with and that conditions. Here's what it looking like. Here's what the expectation is, and then and then see what the town wants to do out of this. Yeah. It can't be just five people showing up here and saying, "Well, this is what we want." Right. I just feel like we gave the town a small blurb at town meeting and said, "Do we want to vote on this and to buy it?" There was not enough information as to what we were actually going with it. And if I'm responsible for the town's decision, it's my I, I don't feel comfortable enough to say yes, it's a crowd fit because nobody ever said it was a crowd fit until those six guys showed up here last week. Well, actually, when Dave Gonyu brought it to this board, it was gravel. It was gravel. Yeah. Right. In the beginning, the beginning. But, then, yeah. and, but the presentation at Tom Meeting was, it was multi purpose. We're going to figure it out. And that's yeah. and that's kind of what we laid back. It's been different. <laughs> then Ken brought back the gravel conversation. Susan Bartlett's kind of said the same thing. And I don't really see this as a good. I just want to run ball fields. Yeah. Yeah, great. Right. Yeah. So it's all on that table. But, but. I mean, for the next 25 years, th there's options to do something different. But once you do establish something, it's no different than what we just did. We, right. we proposed to the town that where the gravel, where the ball fields were, the gravel was going to come up from underneath them. So if we propose that to the town, it's hard for me to go back and say that we're not going to do that. Because, <laughs> I, you know, I just hate to spend that sort of money and not be able to do what you want to do with it in the next year or even five or even five <laughs> but or ten you or know i mean 10. or 20. <laughs> right you're talking you know, about 25 right. years you know it just don't make sense to yeah. to you know based on the restrictions yeah right. restrictions are well and not knowing either that the not knowing part and i hate too. to say this out loud but the lady just said it to us mary just said it we own a piece of property that we can't maintain now so now what do we do now is a town we have a whole other piece of property that we need to maintain where do we maintain it how do we maintain it there's that cost it's not in this line i don't know well the the gamble property can be that's what you're talking about yeah. in that property you know you could go up there in the spring of the year and you could rent yourself a mower and you could mow with a tractor and you can mow that. And then, you know, in another month, go up there and mow that sucker again. And, you and know, see, that's a lot easier said than done. That's what your resources you need to do. It's a, it's not, that's a cost. It's a, it, and that's so different. Well, that's so the, this field up here, who brush off it? Are we going to brush off it? We're going to take it, you know, that's all time <laughs> management. It's all something. We're going to talk about it now, but how long is that? Right. Well, well, it's it's not going to be for a dollar. <laughs> Oh, yeah. really? A oh. dollar an acre or something. Ron, you know that? If $50. I think it's 50 or 60 bucks an acre for every season we've been out of bank. So it's minimal. Yeah, minimal. Yeah. We could offer it as a we could offer it as a lease. You know, we maybe the town could recoup our tax revenue over six hundred. That's what I was thinking. If sure. we could at least recoup the tax revenue rate, mm -hmm. something, but so yes. Something this big, yeah. I want to be upfront. I, I, I've been skeptical. I, I think I just want to make sure that it's upfront, honest, and fair to everyone. Yeah. I, I don't want someone pointing at me and saying that I cost the town a million dollars. Yeah. yeah. Is uh, Brian and Susan, if you guys. We haven't met with Howard. Is, and... that, is that something you guys agreed to? I mean, is that something you're <clears throat> to bring forward with Susan? Well, right. basically, we just got to find out what his proposal is on the finance, yeah. right? Well, it was five years. What's that? It was five years, right? Is that where we landed? Did you miss the meeting? Were you here for the meeting? I was. I missed. I think that's when I had the COVID. Okay. So no, but, no, I was there when, when. Yes. Okay. When uh, Kevin was here and the rest of me, yeah, okay. I was here for that. And we talked about it because because they pointed me and wanted me to be a lead agent. And we already said that there was people that were lead. So yeah, yeah. So, but I can I can get hold of Susan and maybe. <laughs> Talk to Howard and schedule time to go over and visit with him and find out what. Uh, Where we ended up. So there was day. there was a couple. What's of the things. actual proposal? What's the percentage? What's the year? I'm going to have to pour it in writing. What's the acreage? Yeah, yeah. What's the acreage? The acreage changes. The acreage. I mean, it all changed. And one of the biggest questions that come up was Eric Williams' boy wanted to know if we had done our homework and know what's in there for material. It wasn't even that. It was this. Did we did we look at what it's going to cost us? And they had that. I think the the question of the exploring and knowing was intended to be written into the purchase sale agreement. So you're you're sort of sort of cut you know between the approval for the loan. That's all the voters do. They didn't they sort of imply that yes, go ahead. Here's your loan money. Select whether state law has the final say on purchasing. Usually, it's informational if the voters vote on it because statute says select board has to make it. 
but you only they voters have to approve the borrowing part, and that's all. But so now you're stuck between the information changing and trying to hear what the voters said, which was pursue it, and then bringing them back new information. Say we we're kind of stuck in this new information world that we have more information. It's changed since two years ago, whatever. And let's revisit it. How you do that technically? I don't know if you want to upset the loan approval now, mm -hmm. but you may want to have an article put out there so people know what's going to be talked about and just have this discussion at the end of the day. Oh, okay. See what I mean? Not, not propose anything final in the article. Hey, I just see how things work. And I'm, 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 not, I'm not the best politician. I saw it tonight in a few different things. But there's half the town saying, Ken said it the other day, well, if you can't get a permit, you can always recoup your costs. I know how town politics work. You're never going to sell a this property. Because somebody else has something better to push for it. Yeah. Yeah. You've and got to be careful yeah. about making money for the town, too. Wait. Am I wrong on that? Well, you're, you're making, you can make, <clears throat> you can always buy land and sell land and reuse the public land. You know, you don't, it's the tax sale has a problem with that. That's a technical uh, right. tax sale property. But when you're buying land outright, you can sell this property for a profit and go take it to some other building. And then, so then we buy this property and then the town turns around and sells it for the intent of a gravel pit for somebody else is where I'm going. Now all of a sudden, wait a minute, the town bought this and we didn't permit it, but we sold it to someone else to make a gravel pit. Well, well even entity. even selling it to make condos or develop, right. I mean, then you're going to be in a... Yeah, no, each one of those is separate decisions. So yes. you, you right. would necessarily, if you really want, there's some places, some municipalities that go to the voters with a, a master plan proposal for McFarland Road. And you flesh out everything from the wreck to the current pit to the other pit. What's Harrison going to do with his? What are you going to do with this 25? And you come up with a community master plan, which I think is almost what Susan was heading to because she was focused on the 25 at the time. But that road is going to change. Mm -hmm. Harrison's going to drop. We're going to drop. You're going to have a whole different environment up there. And you have houses. And you have Tom Stearns, who's like, don't take my tops. <laughs> this is not what I need. Yeah. It's like, you got these two competing land uses. One's taking everything and disturbing. The other guy's like, don't even spread pesticides because I have valuable seed crop here. Yeah. So you have, a, a, you have a lot of things floating around. And you have a loan approval. And you have no path forward in any one direction yet. So that's why it's kind of hard to go to the voters in a month with a question. It's really just sharing information and taking this to the next level of, geez, what, is everybody still for this even though you don't know? Or is everybody like, don't do it unless you have a plan or the soil boarding side? I was gonna say, we don't even know if this is even any good because we don't even know if there's gravel. I mean, gr granted, 90%. Yeah, yeah. It's gravel. It's gravel, right? Like better gravel probably than the south side from what there's gravel have. to the north of it there's gravel to the south of it right so watch like, like a duck watch like a duck probably did a duck the night you and i were up there when walker was screening it wasn't a very good gravel air no up the road <laughs> yeah, yeah. the road yeah <laughs> up there by charlie davis yeah when you go by davis farm there's gravel up there so i mean there's so we have about four Four more meetings to settle on what would be the article. Next time, the 20th Tuesday is your special meeting. No Christmas Eve meeting. Right. You want to share this with people? Yeah, I've got to, I've got to, I actually just, just had to leave. So I, I had this is the copy now. I think about that. But I'll get them a copy of it. And uh, I'll take those are clean copies over there, right? Yeah. Yes, they are. So whatever, just leave on the table, I'll grab it. Um, so think of that in the sense that we don't have a lot of time, but we have some time to get to that final meeting in January where you have to approve an article. And so here's one other thing that's been floating in my head, and maybe I, I just want to put it out there. Everyone's like, well, what are you going to do when you're running out of it? We still have 40 or 50 years. Even <clears throat> they don't own a pit. Johnson, they don't own a pit. Is Morse own a pit? Yo, so yeah. They're trying yeah. to get one right now. Or? No, they got well, it. Just right there. There. So Everything's all right there. Oh, they got it. <laughs> what I'm saying, what I'm saying, no, we're there. Going to right. to pit, and we're going to turn around and look at buying another pit and another time where we have anything. So we're in a good con condition. Yeah, Snow, yeah. Snow, Snow has one. Yeah, Marshall right. has one. But we're look, we have a pit with a hundred year life expectancy, and now we're looking at buying another pit that's going to have another hundred years. So we're looking two hundred yeah. years to our kids' future. That's. That's why I said well, we what I said the other, the other night. I voted no. The other time. Right? 
No, you can't. That's what Matt and I said. That's You're going to be the Jets. I'm going to say the 50 years. That's what I'm going to say. This whole thing doesn't matter because I literally said this to the other night. I said, it doesn't matter because we're not going to be fine. We're only 25 years. We're going to be the Jets. We are. We're going to be the Jets. They're fasting every day. Every day. All the packages are being flown by drones. It's, it's, it's in our state. Exactly. There is a development in our state. There is a factory that's going to be building drones. Yeah. Yeah, beta. Beta. There you go. We hit it on the head. We can, oh, by the way, the and, uh, and 10 years ago, I was at a meeting from Burlington. And, and the state had done what they said they were going to do. The state has got away from sand. Right. Who uses you see the state of Vermont using sand? Exactly. Yeah. They said back then they were going to yeah. they were getting out of sand. Well, environmental. For yeah. environmental reasons. Because yeah. of the silica. Yeah. That's a whole other story. Right. You know, well, and it's going to be because what are you going to use? I just got my, my ocean notice yesterday in the mail. By the way, they're getting stricter in 23. Yeah. Like we don't have a plan for it yet. Never yeah. mind comply with something, you know. So. And, and this was 10 years ago when I was there. No, this is like real. This is real. They finally passed the rules on this. Now yeah, you need, phased in. You need but they, it's you like need, you need what they call table 10 or table 2A, something like that. So that's the plan you need. Want me to share water on site? Yes. Everything has water. <laughs> Want me to share? Yeah, sure. That'll be good. I, I just asked Mark about it and he didn't respond. So our company developed a plan. I'll share it with you. Okay. That's good. Yeah, it doesn't need to be much, but because we have a gravel thing in particular, it's mm -hmm. the high risk. So it's actually more like any cutoff valve, like cutting pavement. That's the big one. And how about well, we, we've got the tanks up there to bed. No, I'm just saying that the ocean, the mine safety of MSHA is checking now. So they haven't really gone into the roadway to put it together. They're good at That's another thing. Okay. okay. So but I'm still going to set up a meeting with Howard and Susan. Yeah, I just made it up. Get that, yeah. take it up. Susan and I'll send her an email later tonight, probably, and just yeah, make so her aware of it. And I'm going to meet with Kevin. And when I do meet with Ken, I'll I'll, I'll recap the conversation. Does anyone want to go to that meeting? I'll go whenever you want. Uh, put it out to me, and I'll see if I can make it. And okay. if I can, I will. Definitely. Well, it can't be three of us. Oh, that's right. Because it'll be considered it's a meeting. Got to be two. Yeah, we can, yeah. we can do some informal stuff because you're really almost in the real estate yeah. negotiation. Yeah. yeah. So, but if but Brian, you know, like fine. For sure. He's but German. <laughs> Whatever. It shouldn't be three of us. Okay. Huh? Okay. Well, that's uh, that's for me. Say that. Okay. Yeah. Remember that. Okay. You better you better remember he, that. He just educated yeah. me. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's good. I didn't Never think about that. I, I guess for, for purposes of what we're dealing with right now, especially the litigation, I don't want to be sole in anything, any town decisions or any town conversations. Yeah. No, I agree. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely elevated this past couple of weeks. Right. Hmm. Okay, the Moore Valley Rail Trail uh, Trailhead Scoping Award 30,400 grant agreement pending. Just an update. That's all. That we had to we had merged two ideas. One was a pavilion project, and I think the minutes of two hundred thousand, and the other one was a scoping study for safety at the crossing. And talking to Vitri, and we merged it into one that will cover the planning for the pavilion as well as the safety. So that's what we're doing there. I haven't seen the grand agreement yet. Okay. It was just announced in the paper. Wasn't this the one that you guys said that would never happen? No. Yeah, Susan said something about this on property that other people. Is this part of this same thing? That's the other one, isn't it? The, sure. the gazebo. This part is of the, the guy gonna... oh, they, No, this is the project that includes hopefully resolution of the yeah. Uh, the Cornell down at um, yes. There's a there's a property challenge down there. Okay. Okay. Yeah, it's a state of involvement. I have a hard time keeping track of all these things. I don't know. <laughs> I got to update my project report so I can keep track of it. Okay, the seeking municipal planning grant MPG uh, 22 mm -hmm. amendment to North Lake Park sign project. Yeah, that was submitted today. There was a, the GBH committee was working with regional planning to try and pull off their welcome sign plans and how to get that done and how to get a consultant to help them with the actual sign design work. And then get another consultant on the construction specs so they can get a bid package together. And they figured that regional plan could help them with the RFP, but there's no money in the RFP. So talking to Liz, talking to LCPC, move five hours from the graphic designer up to LCPC. Oh, doesn't change. 
and then the committee decided to take on the tagline project, which is you know home of the like Richmond has home of the Round Church. Oh. So you have your logo design, you have welcome, you have Richmond, and then you have home of the Round Church. That's what they're sort of after. But GBH committee people, are volunteers up there, wanted to take over the tagline thing. They didn't want to hire a consultant for that because they figured Liz Courtney, even though she lives in Wolka, could help them do that type of branding or whatever. Oh, nice. Because that's what she does professionally. <clears throat> so that's all. Once we get the project done next year, there'll be a big package with three sides, of which I like the other grant money for that installation. Not, this is just the design to get that package. You know, so it's, you know, put up a sign. But if you really want a sign that's that represents an area and is installed for long term low maintenance, it takes a lot more thought than I could ever think of. Right. <laughs> and you'll know the signs that go up quick if you don't have that forethought. They're like this after like one week, or, <laughs> or they're all flaked up, or you can't read them, or the color scheme is wrong. You know, it's just so much stuff. That, and we're dealing with 35, 50 mile per hour speed limits. So you almost want to make it, you know, you're entering an area, please slow down, kind of sign. Right. I don't, think, I don't think they'll put that on there, but. <laughs> hmm. Slow down. Being a female mitigation, uh, legal has finished draft easement for the Brook and Centerville sites, and now landowners can be contacted with easement plans and proposal easements. Yeah, both sites have limited uh, private easement requests, but they still, the project site for these larger culverts under the new rules, it's like everything gets more expensive, are much bigger. They have like ass fish and all that other stuff. So you end up with our four or five foot culverts being nine to ten, sometimes or even larger. So, because it's FEMA, we have to jump through all these doubles. So it's very long, but step by step by step. So this was a big step here to get these design plans to match the engineering, and then have FEMA say go ahead, and now we can approach landowners to show them for the first time what we're talking about. Screen square footage, permanent and temporary easements to fill in. One thing I wanted to add really quick, we board, the board here had approved researching grant funding for, uh, I think we nicknamed it North High Park Gateway South, which is the intersection improvements at Gamble down yeah. to the 100C intersection to Johnson, which included Larry DeMar's uh, former slash current junkyard, the house on the corner right by the bridge, which is the former church house, and which is abandoned now. And the gamble piece. FEMA's, the FEMA program you all talked about was the, it's called the Flood Resiliency um, in Infrastructure Program or whatever FEMA, but it's F R C I C, whatever they nickname it. But it's basically the short term is a buyout program. So across the nation, you hear FEMA buyout, and that's where flood prone areas are, shoreline areas, and people are picking up their properties and either relocating. Get bought out. I think it's not like 100% funding. It's really an appraisal type thing. Mm -hmm. So even though somebody might want to move up to the rich part of town, that's not what's being appraised. Right. It's the existing property and, and help doing that. I know, so I know one of them in Waterbury, right behind Napa out there. Yeah, we had one in Cochrane Road. It's now public parking in, mm -hmm. in Richmond. You know, it used to be a, like a house that was too close to the flood zone kind of thing. Before I go further with that, it's just a, it's a, again, it's a step by step thing. We reached out to both landowners, <laughs> which is um, Mr. Damar and Mr. Nye. Mr. Nye owns the church street, uh, the church house, former church house. Mr. Nye got back to me yes, yesterday or this morning saying, Yes, I'm interested. Let's talk about what's next. Great. I haven't heard anything from Larry Damar. We have a long history that goes back to my first day, and I parked with him and complaints about. Trump junkyards and stuff that took five or six years to get resolved. It, it's still not totally resolved. No. <laughs> so <laughs> so if, if Nye says he is interested in talking more, one of the there's three key things I want everybody to be aware of from the town's perspective. We enter into grant application phase, he signs certain documents, we sign documents. One of the conditions is if the bio program ends up not happening. Make an application, the money's awarded, the, the, the voluntary participation fails for some reason. The town's prevented from using eminent domain in the future to go get the property. So, part of the participation is the town giving up its right to go back and take the property anyway. So, it's like a good faith oh. thing as part of a grant. If you're going to take the federal money, 
that's you're automatically giving up your rights and having a domain into the future to go take it anyway. So it's like a sort of like the if you're going to be a landowner talking to the town about selling your property and they're telling you it's going to be for per perpetual public use. That's what the deal is. Well, that's what we want it for. Yeah. So it all I mean, the that's program, right. Program I mean, matches the intention for that improvement area. Yeah. But that was one of the figures. There's a ten percent match on that, which we could use the, 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 the economic development improvement. I don't. There won't be that much of the property to sell for like fifty or sixty thousand. Right? Yeah. So you're talking probably on for math purposes, probably under twenty thousand dollars if you're talking about a ten percent match. Yeah. Even less. So you got your 10% you your perpetual public use and the condemnation uh, conclusion, I guess, or whatever you want to you can't, you can't use that later. So what I told that. Mr. Dye was I would go to the tonight's meeting just to remind people, because as I get more to the grant program, you distill what the what the town issues might be. Yeah. And if you guys are okay with pursuing it, then we can start to put the application together, which we do in March, but it'll take a couple of months of trying to get their you know, stack up. Certification the signatures are, and I'll come back with what those really are. For is show. is each property independent? Yeah. Oh, so I was just yeah. going to ask yeah. that. One of the things they have to sign is a voluntary participation form. So that's the first step. If we can get the voluntary participation form signed, then the grant application goes through. So it would be great if we could get Larry to, to yeah. agree yeah. at the same Larry's, time. Larry's uh, contact is. Uh, a friend of his because he would have the email and he's gotcha. all over the place. If, if I don't get a call back through that normal group, I'll have to sort of hunt him down with his yeah. phone and call Larry's record service or whatever he does and, and get in touch with him because it, it would have a March deadline to combine both of them. Right. Yeah. Okay. That's soil that's there underneath all that stuff. He's following the same line of a junkyard. Uh, oh, yeah. We'll do a phase one on that. It's <laughs> part of that grant. Well, yeah. phase one brownfield test. Yeah. Which will show a phase two heat. No, it will show a phase two So yeah, yeah. So the phase one is really just a historical review to see if there's any. Consistency. And he'd be smart to to want to jump on an opportunity right. like that, so he wouldn't have to deal with it. Exactly. If most brownfield properties, when somebody really isn't making the money from it, and they know they can't sell to somebody that needs a mortgage and just they see that as an answer because they can they know they can't pass those tests. Yeah. So they right. put the municipality to solve those problems, but they do give up the property. They right. Know, they're not going to get it back and then a house after you clean it. It's going to be parking or fishing access or something. Yeah. So I'll continue without objection kind of thing. Yeah. It's already approved to proceed, but yeah. I'll, at some point I'll have to come back with real documents to look at. So we need to give you the okay to go forward. Yeah, just no objection. You know, so yeah. Anyways, anyways, that's saying don't go forward, then I won't start the paperwork. You didn't hear that, so we can go forward. Yeah, yeah. definitely. <clears throat> Track it down. Yeah. Just that one. Okay. Great. A motion to adjourn. I second. All the papers signify by saying aye. 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 Adjourned.